Welcome to the Like Mugs Podcast. I'm your host, Quincy. And I'm your other host, Justin. And today we have a guest with us. Hello, I'm Piper. So, Piper's actually working on an um, intro for the show, and is uh, also in a band. You want to drop the band really quick? Uh, yeah, sure. The band name is Hidden Scars. You can find us on all those beautiful sites like Spotify, Deezer, Facebook, YouTube, all that good stuff. Uh, and uh, you guys are getting ready to start a tour too, right? Uh, yeah, we're going to do a couple shows here in Las Vegas. Uh, first one's coming up soon on April 13th at Backstage Bar and Billiards on uh, off of Fremont Street. That's going to be a fun one, playing with uh, Any Last Words. Then we're playing on uh, May 3rd with 69 Eyes over at uh, uh, Count Vamps, I believe. And then after that, we're doing a Chris Cornell tribute show at the House of Blues on uh, May 18th. Uh, I believe that's the day for that one. That's going to be a cool one. That whole show is nothing but tribute to Chris Cornell and all the proceeds are going to go to suicide prevention and stuff like that. So oh, be hell yeah, I'm behind this. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. I mean, obviously, already for the suicide prevention stuff, then the fact that I am a Chris Cornell fan, both before and after he did a song for James Bond. Yep. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, he did the uh, Casino Royale song, so. Um, and then, uh, so normally we are going to go through our... Uh, our different drinks really quick we'll start with justin over here uh i got mine from smith's which is a local grocery chain uh and it it's just a regular citrus green tea and i'm enjoying it so far yeah, it's the kroger brand one the yeah. smith's brand whatever you want to call it yeah uh and then me and piper are actually drinking the same thing here we get the um starbucks uh caramel grounds now i did this on an earlier episode but as a k-cup and the k-cup came out fine I did French press this time. Mine didn't come out very good, but that's on me. Soiled it! But Piper's enjoying his. He did his with a yep. uh, creamer and some sugar, so. Oh, yeah. I'm so. not a big coffee guy, so I followed the leader on this one. <laughs> I, I remember uh, one of the first times you came over to my place, I was making coffee for everyone, and you're like, okay, I'll try it. <laughs> and I made you a cup of coffee, you take your first sip, and you're like, ooh. <laughs> it's like, I like your coffee. <laughs> So, uh, do you want to just start with this, then? Let's go into news. Oh, you want to go into news? Right? We'll go straight into the news. Okay. So. Uh, I'm a huge Cowboy Bebop fan. I, I think all of us here kind of are. Yeah. Uh, the only thing I haven't seen is the movie. Oh, the movie's great. Have you seen the movie? Negative. Okay. Okay. The uh, 2001 movie is just as good, but apparently it now has its funding and its cast, well, at least four of them, for uh, Spike Spiegel, Jet Black, Faye Valentine, and Vicious, insert last name here. Um, I don't know about their choices. The only one I could say is Faye. Uh, as Spike is uh, John Cho. Yeah, John Cho, and uh, as Jet, it is Mustafa Shakur, and I'm like, they they chose two very diverse actors, but I can't really see them as Spike and Jet. So I don't really know anything for uh, Mustafa, um, but I know oh. John. The problem is, is everything I know John from, I just I don't see. They're com Spike. they're comedies. Cause I mean, Star Trek's, Trek's not Star Trek's Star Trek's not, but he was. I think he was a little bit of comedic relief, a little. He took Sulu to a more serious point. I mean, it's Sulu. I mean, you, it's you're Sulu. used to getting, getting George Takei on that. Yeah, he does play oh a good my. stoner, but he does do some good... <laughs> I mean, Daryl and Kumar, yeah, you're right. He does do some good serious but, roles, though. Uh, Mustafa, I, the only thing I know him from is Bushwhacker in uh, Luke Cage. And he did... Was that second season? Uh, first season. Well, actually, both seasons. Don't remember. Uh, the, the dude with the armor penetrating rifle. The one that actually shot luke and it oh, caused damage okay i remember now um and then spoilers <laughs> i thought you saw that no no i'm saying for the podcast spoilers. oh <laughs> i mean it's it's 2016 come on yeah i mean I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna fight now you have you seen full blood uh full metal alchemist uh yes okay there's you... a couple versions isn't there yeah uh, yeah there's regular. brotherhood and regular yeah, 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 yeah i think regular is the one i was at did okay. you see that netflix did a live action adaptation to it I did, but I thought it was in Japanese. It was. Yeah, it was, but it, it had it had cover over as well. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it wasn't bad. Then they did Death Note. Have you seen Death Note yet? Yikes. I didn't see it, but I saw they have it on there. Okay, so they did it's, Death Note live action, and it's it's rough. <laughs> I've, oh, heard, yeah. I've heard it's not too good, so I, I didn't waste my time on it. It's good that you didn't. It's not, it's not bad if they didn't directly tie it to it. If they said that it was its own adaptation, it might have been fine, but they tried to do story for story on death note and it came out very jumbled and not great so the scene they use that most people use to point this out is the fact that if you watch when light yagami meets i can't remember the the shinigami? Reaper's name, the shinigami's name uh, well when he meets the shinigami for the first time 
in the anime, he's all like, you're a Shinigami. And he's like, kind of got like an evil, dark tone to his voice. Like, yeah. holy crap, I've got a Shinigami in my position now. Versus the live action where he screams like a bitch and falls back into several shelves and like starts like running on the ground trying to get away. Yeah. <laughs> and so when I heard live action Cowboy Bebop by Netflix, I panicked. Yeah, and for good reason. Um, so I do like the idea of letting Keanu Reeves direct, though, because he's... Uh, Ryuk, by the way. Uh, Ryuk, there you go. Thank you. I, I think he could be a good director. I think he might take it in a good place. Maybe he can drive this cast the right way. I'm. I mean, I'm. I'm holding my heart out there to hope that this is a saving grace. I mean, they're all really good actors. I don't know too much about uh, uh, Daniela Daniela Pin- Pineda. I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name, but she looks like she is a a pretty okay match for Faye Valentine. She and looks then, okay. And then, meanwhile, you have the Vicious where I'm squinting, and I'm like, I guess in a dark room he would look like Vicious, considering all of his scenes are uh, the shade over his eyes and and him just, you know, scowling. Uh, it is Alex Hassel. Um, he, I guess in a dark room with the silver hair, could look like Vicious. I'm not I'm not going to say no, but with, with some good directors, here's to hoping. Here is to hoping. Until they cast the most important character in the entire series, uh, we won't know. Oh, Ayn. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> I think we got to get Ayn. Um, but we'll move on to some more anime things before we move on to anything gaming. Um, it is... I'm spacing on his name right now. Oh, uh, Akira... Uh, Tor- Tor- Toriyama. Toriyama. Thank you. I'm bad with these Japanese names. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> um, creator of Dragon Ball. It's his birthday today. Oh, so happy nice. birthday to him. Happy He's birthday. 64. 64 years old. I thought he was a little younger than that, to be 100% honest. Uh, and if the photo I saw of him is recent, he's looking good for 64. Uh, almost every Japanese person, like, I'm I'm kind of curious right now. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. You're seriously going to Google? Oh, who, wait, who are you Googling? Oh, you're Googling Kojima. And Kojima's... He's 55, fine. and look at him. He does not look like... He looks like mid-30s. Like, this is probably a recent photo. Yeah, it is a recent photo of him. Oop. Like, look at that. It's something in the water. <laughs> it, it's gotta be. Like, real talk, the Asian people know how to age. I think you should have stayed with the round glasses, personally, though. I Well, <laughs> all of his glasses are designer-made. I like, still think you should have stayed with the round ones. Oh, I mean, <laughs> either shit, way. Well, personally. Um, um, but, hey, happy birthday. Yeah, happy birthday to him, 64, and hopefully still gonna pop out some more Dragon Ball stuff that we can enjoy. Um, and then, I mean, do you drag- want to count Yu-Gi-Oh! under anime? Yeah, sure. I mean, I mean I'm they're... talking about the card game, not the. Oh, that that whole thing of if... yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, <laughs> have right. you heard about this? Yes. Okay. I have. So they do tournaments for Yu-Gi-Oh. Of and, course. Like they do Pokemon, and I'm sure like they eventually will for Gwent and so on and so forth. Um, and they have updated the guidelines, stating that if you stink, you will be penalized. <laughs> I'm kind of curious on what the penalty is. Take a freaking shower. They like... didn't state. I'm assuming it's just we'll ask you to leave. So it, it, it would be full-blown disqualification. Probably. Mm. I mean, just fucking shower. Yeah, you, you're <laughs> like, right. You're and, right. And body spray is not showering. You, uh, Axe is actually making a uh, a body spray that is supposed to be a conditioner to your skin. So it helps be like an active shower without actually using water. Like a dry shampoo. Take a 10-minute shower. Like, well, no, no, no. I mean, for like people on the go. It's it's not meant to be like an everyday use. Yeah, it's like, supposed to be... Like, oh, I'm a little funky on this way to this uh, meeting. Let me spare myself. Yeah, it's like, or, or ah, shit, I don't have enough time to shower. Pap, 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 out the door. Yeah. You know? The Bermuda Triangle Wash. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> now, what is the gauge? Is it like, if I smell you within five feet, you gotta I go? Well, they okay. didn't stay. <laughs> For 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 them, it's they. There are referees that actually make sure there's no sleight of hand because there is that sort of thing where people pat pat slap pat pat slap and try to do double lifts. And stuff yeah, like and try and pick up more cards. So the referee will have to go in and count cards and actually physically count the cards and then go fair. You know, you're still in play. And whenever they have to shuffle the decks, they shuffle themselves. Yeah. So then they set it down. So I guess if they're doing any one of those actions and they go. Ugh. I guess that would also count red card. Well, and the article I was reading was also stating that it's just a general funk when you walk into the building. I maybe, maybe, maybe the preliminaries so, they'll they'll ha- they'll have you raise your arms. Seen some of these people? Good point. Yeah, I mean, well, there's <laughs> the classic um, video I, of the got, rage. Well, I've got friends that that do Yu Gi Oh plays and, and stuff like that. That you know they shower, so they prove it can be done. <laughs> that, of course, that's the thing. But the fact that it had to be made a rule is what's baffling me like why did it have to get to this point it probably got that bad yeah i I just shower everybody shower 
we're all gonna go take a shower but not after this not together but <laughs> well maybe after this but not together after this but not together um can we put the same rule in at music festivals i, we, I feel like we should <laughs> you stink you gotta walk Yikes. out <laughs> edc 2015 was bad when when i'm standing five or six feet from you before the crowds even really moved in before the concert really even started and, and you I can, can already smell you you can isolate I'm scared. you can isolate that yeah. one person out of the entire crowd and be like that motherfucker smells i'm getting away from that because when the lights go on when all that body heat gets in there everyone starts moving oh yeah and i get that i, I get the whole body heat you're on a pool and yeah. i went to godsmack last year and i had i'll stand behind this guy who's about two feet in front of me i couldn't breathe i couldn't hear the music <laughs> my senses were so smashed oh by this guy's bo uh. that i just had to get away from him <laughs> oh god like, i wanted to throw him in the pit so they can maybe just kind of like tumble wash him or something <laughs> it clean. yeah i mean he was just rank well that's was... all could be and it was not a normal hey we're all sweating it's a little bo yeah. i mean this dude must have had the same drawers on since he was like two months well, old and i get people have conditions and stuff like that but you can't tell me an entire tournament room <laughs> full of people have the same condition like yeah. you're cor- you're unless it's for that condition but um <laughs> one of the things that also kills me is if it's starting to get bad enough that you as a person that's on stage is worried about it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, that's when we start to have to draw on a line. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, already, yeah. We don't need the singer choking halfway through the song. If I could Ugh. smell you on stage, that's a problem. <laughs> yeah, so, that's not great. You can't smell me because I take a shower. Yeah. So you, I expect <laughs> the same from you. Or maybe you can smell me because I take a shower, but it's a good smell. It's a good <laughs> smell. It's it's a tolerable I smell. I even have, I don't have much of a beard, not like Piper does right now, but I even have shampoo for my beard. Oh, yeah, me I'm too. Like, I want to be clean. Yeah, I got beard wash, beard I, conditioner. I, I also have beard conditioner. I don't, do I don't use it. I don't do conditioner for the hair or for the beard because it just gets too poofy. I'm very poofy when I use conditioner. I, I can't. I, I look like a damn like electric socket moment. <laughs> it's insane. You're talking okay. to the Chia pet over here, so... <laughs> So, um, did you want to talk about this next since we're on anime type stuff? Yeah, I I don't know too much about it though. Well, it was just announced today. Because I did I did catch a few sights and glimpses, but I didn't exactly look into it. Uh, Q Force is an LGBTQ plus animated comedy series from uh, Sean Hayes. Yeah, the, and, he's the head writer <clears throat> and producer on uh, Brooklyn Nine Nine, which is a good show. It's a very good I, show. I love that show. Um, I've not watched a single episode. You need Ooh. to. You'll love the captain. <laughs> you will. You will enjoy. Actually, you'll enjoy pretty much. Well, that's Terry yeah. Crews, right? Terry no, Crews, no, no. Uh, no, Terry Crews is uh, one of the detectives. Oh, okay. Yeah. Terry uh, Crews is yeah. Terry plays Terry. Terry plays Terry, which it's is actually how they got him to do it. Yep. Yeah. They, and, they told him, "We know you're looking at shows, but uh, someone else is going to be playing under your name if you don't accept ours." And he's like, "Damn." <gasps> Another cool thing is his character really loves yogurt, and that's actually only a thing because well, a Terry, Terry really loves yeah. yogurt. <laughs> Jesus, uh, and then Ooh, hit the mic there. But it's all right. So yeah, Netflix is ordering this as a. It's going to be an adult animated series, which they're starting to get a lot of, um, and that's fine and fair. I'm, I'm not saying anything against it. It's just they've got Disenchanted, they've got this one, they've got Bojack, Castlevania, Agretsuko. I mean, Agretsu- would you consider Agretsuko adult? I don't think kids would enjoy it just because it deals with real life problems. Oh yeah, the the mental breakdowns and all that, and the fact that she works as an accountant. Yeah, I don't think kids would really lean yeah. in for that. I mean, it may be set in Hello Kitty's world, but a kid's not going to care. Well, Netflix is just caring about quantity nowadays, not well, quality. Yeah, no, there was a quote a couple of years back from the head of Netflix where he's like, I want a new show every day. And yeah, and that's like, ridiculous. Yeah. It's ridiculous, but at the same time, I'll, I'll agree with you. It is quantity, but they're not taking away too, too much from quality in some cases. Like, I did enjoy season two of The Punisher. I watched the first season of 13 Reasons Why. I'm pretty sure they stopped caring about quality a while ago. You okay, you know what? That. <laughs> Never mind what I just said. He is correct. I, I saw about five episodes of 13 Reasons Why, and I, I could not carry myself through that. It was a disaster. So it's based off a book. It is based off a book. From and I it, understand the book is very much like it's very much like the show, but kind of makes the reason less dickish. And then at the same time, it's glorifying it. I wouldn't say it's glorifying it because it more shows the pain she was going through. I know a lot of people looked at it as glorifying. I guess it's just how everyone takes it. Yeah, okay. I, I can see it from the other side, but at the same time, it's, it, it just seems like it was trying to hold it up on this pedestal that you couldn't really manipulate. No. But the show ended... Uh, they did the first season, which you know. ended the book. Like that's where the book ended, and, and then, they, then they were like, "Oh, in season two, and then season three. And I'm like, "Okay, Ooh. Netflix, the book ended. You're good done. Yeah, like, what, what, come what, on, guys. I don't know. I don't care. I don't want. It's kind of like it. when Stars did 
Dexter, they did the first season's based off the first book. Every season after isn't. And then with the way the show ended, the author hated it so much that he made a new Dexter book. Spoilers. Just to kill Dexter. Jesus. <laughs> I like Dexter, too. I, I didn't mind Dexter. Uh, I didn't really get fully into it, but I mean... It was all right. The first it, two seasons are good. First, After that, it gets a little difficult it, to watch. It it gets stretchy. Yeah. It gets very very lengthy. Well, um, that and they got rid of my favorite uh, favorite character. Favorite. In like the second favorite. favorite. Well, if you have the patience for it, it's pretty good. Yeah. Just in the sense of like, I remember that his main villain basically that that how long that took for that come to flourishion of I him think, holding his kid and all that's like. I mean, try to do minor through... spoiler, but. Where he's holding the kid and has a reference it, to him as a kid. I'm like, yeah. okay, it, it's ended okay. for a, it's ended for a while, so you're fine. You're, you're probably if you haven't seen it yet, that's your fault. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, people are always getting old enough to watch these things. That's yeah, my that's argument. true. <laughs> and then if they're, if they're interested in the synopsis, yeah. they should go out and check it out. A few minutes of talking about Dexter here, so turn your ears away. Um, I made it to past oh Tom Hanks's son and what's his name? Uh, Battlestar Galactica guy. Uh, I got you. Elmos, Jane, uh, upper James Elmos. Uh, that was the last season I watched, I think. I think that's the same season with most stuff. I want to say the biggest thing that happened... Uh, I'm not. Somebody died. I'll just yeah, I, know, that. I, I saw past that. The okay. family member that died. Yeah, I yeah. saw past that. And I was like, alright, I remember that, and I don't remember anything past Honestly, that, really. I'm kind of glad. Okay. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> I mean, it, it had its... I, she or he was a little annoying. And got kind of douchey as the seasons went on. But uh, <laughs> neither here nor... Yes, this, uh, indeed. This new Netflix animated series, they're saying it's going to be like a like a gay James Bond. He's going to be like a Secret Service person, highly attractive with his team of LGBTQ characters. And it's going to be comedy. Yeah. That's what... The, so I'm like... So it'll be... Um, I'll give it a shot. I mean, I'm all right with it. I think what might turn I, me away is depending on what the animation looks like yeah i mean the there was this dragon secret that was on netflix and i watched two episodes and i was like this looks really uh ruby if you guys know ruby from yeah, no, with um, y right yeah or uh, a by right yeah okay. uh and then when i saw it i was like uh it looks like ruby and i would rather watch ruby because ruby has an amazing story arc mm -hmm. uh if you haven't seen it recommend it it's pretty good uh i got pulled into it thanks to uh one of my friends. Uh, this just made me feel like I wanted to watch Ruby. The okay. story, the story didn't seem like it was going to be too too bad, but it didn't hold me. Well, what I'm curious is, I don't know what you remember from James Bond, but I remember he is uh, always a ladies' man, yes, and very no. flaunting. So I'm curious if they're going to make this gay James Bond very flaunting yeah, with men. I'm wondering if they take it that if far. He's like, <laughs> However, he does make do, a comment. Yeah. Did you see Skyfall? No, I have only seen, I think, one Daniel Craig one. Okay, so first of all, watch all of them. Quantum Solace is forgettable, but you have to watch it for the story. Okay. Uh, watch the rest of them. Um, what, what was the one we watched? Sky, uh, we watched Casino Royale. That's it. Uh, so there's a part in Skyfall where he's got the villain, uh, and the villain's got him tied up to a chair, and kind of comes up and kind of positions his legs between Bond's legs and has his hands on Bond's legs and everything. And he's basically suggesting that they fuck without saying it and being that like bond's never tried it how do you know you don't like it bond's never tried and it. bond kind of <laughs> looks at him and kind of goes uh how do you know i haven't and he just oh, mr bond he's <laughs> a man of many talents <laughs> right <laughs> like it, it's a new age bond like it's very possible that he experimented went not for me and moved on and, and then you know? went into casino royale where he got his balls busted but they've always That's portrayed true, him as a <laughs> They've always portrayed oh, him was, as a very manly man. Yeah, no, he is, but he was also a character invented post World War II during a very manly man era. So I just don't want him to be like I'm thinking for some reason Quagmire. Like they're gonna make him Quagmire, right. but all towards <laughs> yeah. men. No, I, I hope it does have a certain <laughs> level of class to it. I mean, I maybe a gay version of Archer. You know what? That's a better reference. Yeah. I would I would enjoy to watch that. Yeah. But then again, it's not to say that Archer wasn't gay. Yeah, true. He, he got really moments. close to the Cuban guy. Uh, the one that uh, was going to blow up his mom's uh, condo. And then betrayed him not once, but twice. twice. Spoilers. Spoilers <laughs> for... You're just knocking him out of the park today. I don't even care. I like... don't even know if it was spoiled for me. I watched Vice. That was the last one I've seen. This is before Vice. Oh, okay. Then I'm good. Oh, no. This was uh, during mm -hmm. Vice. No. The, se the second betrayal was during Vice. The second betrayal was during Vice. Yeah. yeah. So, before but that. the first time he meets him was before Vice. Yeah. Um, I don't think we have anything else anime based though. So uh, you want to move on to this? Yeah, sure. Fuck it. So, uh, did you ever see Pan's Labyrinth? Either one of you? I did. 
I've seen the scene of the eyes. The, That's the eye it. Thing. That's all okay. I've seen. Yeah, was, so, Pad's Labyrinth to, it's a Guillermo del Toro movie. <clears throat> Guillermo, Guillermo. I, I give up. Um, Guillermo del Toro. Thank you. Guillermo. And I'm the one that's part Mexican. Yeah. Uh, it's a movie, a lot of uh, special effects, really good special effects. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. And it's in Spanish. I highly recommend watching it. Um, I, being as dyslexic as I am, don't do subtitles, and I will sit through this movie. I enjoy it that much. Um, that being said, uh, Guillermo is coming out with a book for it, and it drops July second. Um, do we have a price on it? So uh, hardcover is twenty bucks. Hardcover is twenty bucks. Uh, and then it seems if you get Audible, it's going to be free. Uh, well, that... with your free trial, of course, or if you have Audible or prescription. Price. Yeah, no, yeah. No, they're giving you the yeah, they're giving you the free <laughs> trial price. I can pull up the Audible price right now. But um, someone tells me it's no, it says well, okay. Yeah, see, it's listing the free uh trial thing there. Because uh, you get one free book when you sign the portable. Not sponsored, hopefully, eventually. Hopefully, eventually. Um, but, uh, so this is actually a book by him. It's me called uh, Pad's Labyrinth, The Labyrinth of the Fawn. Um, I'm all for it. I'm, I'm here for it. I'm happy that they're doing more Pan's Labyrinth stuff because while we have had spinoff stuff through other writers, it's not Del Toro, and so I'm glad to have Del Toro back. Yeah. So, I mean, it's his invention. It's his baby. I like it. I like that he's back to it. I'm happy that Del Toro's at least still doing something because they keep to they keep kind of like jabbing him with these projects. Hey, do good with this and we'll let you have this. And he does adequate and gets freaking shafted. Uh, 3079 on Audible. Ah, wow, really? Yeah. Wow. Um, I don't know. He did what? He did. He just won an Oscar last year for Ship of Water. Yeah. So, I mean, he got that, but you're right with the whole Pacific Rim Hellboy thing and uh, and the Kojima game, uh, Silent Hills. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He got, well, that, that was more Konami just being. Oh, dumb. yeah. Konami being difficult. Is Con- the new Hellboy on the list? Uh, we've talked about the new Hellboy a little we, bit. We did talk about it. Um, We are. We're kind of here for it. We're here for it. The, the Guillermo is here for it. Ron's here for it, even though they aren't, of course, selected for it. So then we're here for it. So we're, that's how we're taking it. It looks yeah. good. Yeah, it looks. Cr- I, I, I don't know too- about the actor. I can't get over the last one. I was like, the la- that's Ron Hellboy. I'm from like that's that's Hellboy. I mean, this weird demon looking thing they got. Now I'm like, what? I mean, to be fair, all you're given is this weird cell shading with a slate face. You're not given too much detail. Now, don't get me wrong. Ron Perlman does kind of fit that, and this one kind of adds a little bit of wrinkle to it, and doesn't exactly give. It's the- a little too much wrinkle for me, and then his voice doesn't settle well. Did you watch uh, Stranger Things? Yeah, it's the share. No kidding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like that moment of it clicking. Yeah, I was like, yeah. that is him. Yeah. yeah uh, no, I mean, he's not sheriff. He's not bad. I watched the uh, the Red Band trailer. It's, it looks good. I, I The I, movie looks good, yeah. I just can't get over Like, he just looks so different. You, you're yeah. correct. It's kind of like I have the same issue with Spider-Man and Batman and all of them. Once I get that's the actor that plays that character, when I see the next movie, I'd like to see that actor again play that character. Uh, it's it's a little bit of I guess it could be, but then again, when you look at as many Batman's as there are, what... that's over time. Yeah, I'll get that. I'll give <laughs> it like, that one. <laughs> uh, Christian Bale, maybe. Uh. So my whole thing is, I wish they just thought because Guillermo del Toro and Ron Perlman both said that the Hellboy movies they were doing were always planned to be three. Yeah, and they never got to do the third one to finalize the trilogy. And now this one's coming out. It's not connected. It's a full restart. I would have liked if Guillermo had gotten to do his third one and then the reboot happened. What what kind of sucks is the second one ended off with a really good cliffhanger of uh oh what is her name Fire Girl's name I know you're talking about I can't remember her name. yeah, yeah I, I, I don't can... remember her name I'm I'm sorry I'm not gonna go search it up real quick but uh it ended with her saying she's pregnant with two kids I'm yeah. like holy shit that's a great ending that's a great cliffhanger how is he gonna you know manage that nothing we got we got we got the major screw and this is one of those moments where I'm just like can he get together with the uh with like dark horse or the creators of hellboy or something and do a comic and like i would I'm, love to see it so this isn't take this isn't coming after the second this is a whole new this story this is a whole new. new one well then yeah. i'm more accepting of a new actor yeah. there you go so i guess that's better i mean they uh, also oh, what's his name uh guy from deadwood i'm spacing on that we were just talking oh, about like a week or two ago. the older gentleman yeah he's in Fire American gods i'm looking at hold on he's playing the professor and the new hellboy and i'm spacing out his name he's the one that runs the hotel in john wick uh, uh, Ian. Yeah. Ian McShane. Ian McShane. Oh, that guy, yep. He's playing the professor in the new Hellboy. So I was like, a younger version of the professor. That's kind of interesting. So, because it was, what, William Hurt, the first one, right? Yes. And he, yeah. he played a marvelous professor. I mean, I don't think I, there's a William Hurt role I don't like. But the like, professor's fair. dead. 
not anymore. Not anymore. See, this is why I can't do that. <laughs> That's why I can't do reboots. All right. Before we get into <laughs> major gaming, I think we'll hit this one. Uh, Prince Harry of the great UK <laughs> government has... I'm with you, Prince. Has, I'm with you. ...has put it out as a major quote that he does not like Fortnite and would like to see it banned in the United Kingdom. So he's saying the game's addicting and that it's an addictive thing, so it needs to be banned. And I'm like... Well, if you do that, then okay. you've been all addicted. We got different reasons, but I'm still with you. Yada, yada, yada. Snack food. Yeah, and to me, I was like, well, if I had a son or daughter, I would limit, and I would be a parent. And that's the thing, is he's saying ban it, and he and it's like, it shouldn't be banned. It hasn't done anything wrong. Parents should be blamed for this, for not regulating what their kids are now playing and doing. Now they, now they themselves, as in the Fortnite creators, hasn't done anything wrong. But Epic Store has done a lot of bad well, things in the last two months, and they're even so, none of it is harmful or illegal. It's just kind of douchey. Big douche, big big, big douche. douche. Uh, you big weren't here douche. for this. So Epic Games, the company that makes Fortnite, yep. launched a gaming program like Steam, a um, DRM, a DRM, so that you can buy games to them. Then they locked down the new uh, Metro game so that they get the exclusive sale on it for the next year. And this is after Steam was already selling pre-orders that this went through. You... Furthermore, they also pulled the fact that if you buy one and two digitally, you can only buy them from Epic. Right now. Right you now. Want, you want to know one major thing mm-hmm. about Borderlands 3? Uh, is or isn't going to Epic. Is exclusive to Epic until April 2020. See? Oh yeah! So I, I, I'm if lucky. If you buy that... it on PC, you can only buy it through Epic for the next year. Yeah, I mean, well, for about seven uh, September nineteenth to April twenty twenty. That's not too well. I too mean, bad. the pre-orders are available now, aren't they? Uh, so even so, you're still only able to pre-order it. through Maybe Epic. so, but then again, I'm pretty sure me and you are going to probably do, I'll do console. console. Yeah. So I mean, we're I not. Probably will do console but too. Probably. Yep. Here's the opening closed hand on that. They're actually saying that they're wanting to do full cross-platform play, and I'm like. Okay, if you got Sony to say okay on that, yeah, I'm that, okay with that's that. That's the problem is Sony's going to hold out again. No, uh, apparently Sony is okay with it considering the um, the new uh, updated uh, Borderlands 1 that just released yesterday, mm-hmm. which Steam users get it for free if you already own the Game of the Year edition. Uh, oh, that's cool. It has better net code. It has more guns. It has more loot. It's just basically an upgraded version, and it's cross-platform. Okay, well, that's cool. I'm glad Sony finally budged on this because they've been a real stick in the mud for a while about this. Yeah, I'm I'm super hype about it. I, I have it downloading as we speak right now just so I can hop in there and take a peek, maybe break a few lines of code just to see if I can uh, without getting banned. Don't ban now me. Now they're on to you. Don't ban me. Um, but yeah, so for the Fortnite thing, I don't think it need to be banned. I think that it just... Parents need to be parents. Parents need to be parents. Ban it. And <laughs> You're saying that because you don't like Fortnite. Yes. Okay. Ban all Battle Royale games. Okay, now wait, hold on. Hold on. All of all them. All of them? Yes. All of them. All I'm, of I'm them. I'm going to say he's probably not an Apex fan. That's fine. Oh, Battlefield Black. No, I played a- I played them all. I'm a gamer. I play games. <laughs> well, this one just dropped, but, so it's hard you to... Know, you know, I do have my likes and dislikes. Now, hold on, hold on. Before you, before you dig into it, look at how beautiful that is. So he just brought up the uh, Battlefield Five Firestorm. And it um, looks pretty. It's their look at, look at, of the and it has helicopters, active movements. The firestorm is a lot more dangerous. To be that fair, PUBG has out. cars. Huh? No, so so to yeah. be fair, PUBG has cars. PUBG has cars, but they're bad physics. These well, actually everything about PUBG is bad. Physics. I do not like. Okay, <laughs> let me paint this little picture. I was in it since the uh, alpha, just as soon as it went from alpha to beta. Yeah, I was not a big fan of that. That was not a fun time. The crazy thing is, is uh, they're on the same engine as um, uh, Fortnite. Unreal, well, yeah, and yeah. they wanted to sue. This is basically just looking like Call of Duty Blackout to me. Okay, yeah, that's because that's what it and, is. I mean, that's basically and, what it is. and it's, it's just clothes. a battle royale. It's more my style. I like the more realistic shooter. Personally, I don't like shooting somebody and they turn into a building like on Fortnite. So like PUBG and yeah. Apex and all those other games where I was leaning towards those more. But even so, as I play them, for me, I'm more high pace. I like if I die, I can get right back into the game. Okay, all that's right. That's one thing. The other part is. I guess I don't necessarily have a team to play with, so I always play with randoms. Yeah. And in Battle Royale games, team is huge. Well, yeah, and, and playing with randoms is always something that can really hurt your opinion and out of an online game. Apex forces you to do it. Um, yep. 
But now, I played with some friends and it makes it more enjoyable as a game, mm-hmm. but it's still it's just there's so many I'm so realistic. Like I I play hardcore on Call of Duty and like I know if I shoot you in the chest, dude, you're not running. Yeah. yeah. So like <laughs> I've I'm I am i am a little biased, sure. Now my thing with, with the Battle Royale games is I'm fine with them. I just don't like them coming to platforms they shouldn't come to, like the fact that GTA now has a battle royale game. Yeah, I don't that one I don't think can bode too well. Well, GTA's always done that. They, they'll just use anything that's popular They're just yeah. trying to get people in there. Money. Yeah, well, and, and yeah. that's the thing. Come in for a bonus. <laughs> I, I, I checked out of GTA a long time ago, and yep. now that Red Dead 2 is out, I want to get it, but I don't care about the online. I'm the not going to buy it okay, the online. okay, and it's another, it's just another staple of playing with your friends, because you can have a posse of up to like eight people, I think. Mm-hmm. So if you got eight people of your friends, that's just one hell of a game to play online, just because of the world you're in. I think the one good thing about playing that one online versus GTA online is no jet coming in and blowing up the whole fucking city. Yep. Yeah. I, <laughs> now, but you bit. do get people who will come up and lasso you on their horse and just drag you. <laughs> See, fuck that. <laughs> so that there, still like is, there still is a-holes in that game. Yeah. But, oh, yeah. Well, there's a-holes in every game, though. Exactly. So I, I feel mean, like most. You can't Rockstar. escape it. Most. I feel like Rockstar bra- like, breeds them somehow. It's more refreshing because in GTA, you're playing in a world we already live in. Mm-hmm. Like, we drive cars. We have skyscrapers. When yeah. you're playing Red Dead online, you're in a different time frame. You got fucking horses. You can go do a lot more, I guess mundane things like you can go farm if you want <laughs> well in gta sure you can go golf you can go yeah. play tennis you can do different stuff we but... played plenty of tennis matches on gta i mean you... yeah so... it's just another like kind of sandbox game yeah normally our gta nights would start out us doing some kind of mission someone in the group getting tired and the rest of the group having to dick off until that person that was tired finally said i'm going to bed and we all went okay yeah <laughs> it would normally change who it was but that was always how it kind of burnt down <laughs> so yeah, pretty much um now let's move on to WonderCon didn't really have anything worth talking about. Um, they did some panels. They dropped some trailers. Go watch the Batman TMNT trailer. It looks good. Yeah, I, I, I can't really say anything about a trailer. I can't show you the trailer. So we'll move over to PAX East. It was PAX East, right? PAX East. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, they had a lot of indie games, but a few sequels to not so indie games. I mean, well, I mean, kind of. No, I don't know. Like it was, this was big in its day. This this was big in its day, and this is actually published by an indie okay, scene. So, so this is weird. Part. It's made by an actual publisher. Okay, even so, it's Streets of Rage four. Streets of Rage four. I mean, I love Streets of Rage one and two. I never really got too big on the three, but I mean, the fact that this one is an, a direct sequel. It shows. Uh, I believe it is. Uh, God, what is his name? Now, uh, did you play Streets of Rage, any of the other ones? Negative. So it was one of those... Uh, beat-em-ups. Beat-em-ups where you just go oh, left like and right. like a two-story scroller. Yeah. Yeah, I don't or remember. two-story. 2D scroller. Yeah, 2D scroller. <laughs> but even still, they, they look older. They actually look like their characters grown up a little bit. It it actually looks really good. The cover art makes me relive the good old days of... Um, what is that game called? Uh, God, my memory's killing me. Third Strike. Mm. Uh, it looks really good. It... it, it the moves look good. The enemies look like they're just HD re-renders, but the entire scene looks hand-drawn. I it like looks, the artwork. It looks beautiful. The uh, action scenes look just as good. Um, this there, there wasn't a story when the first one happened. The first one, you see a girl get clonked in the head by some thugs. No, like, that is uh, Double Dragon. Oh, uh, it's Double Dragon. My bad. This one is basically a guy's doing drugs, uh, a drug deal in your neighborhood, and you're just cleaning it up. Okay. Mm-hmm. You're semi cop. So a little bit more story than Double Dragon. Yeah, so you're semi <laughs> you're semi cop. You're not necessarily full cop. Vigilante. I in two you pull up in a police car and then you use a special ability to call in a police car that shoots missiles or whatever at the field. So Vigilante has been at it for a few years and has cop connections. Pretty much uh, <laughs> dread. Okay. Yeah. You're 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 you are shoot to kill. Uh, do you have a do we have a price on this? Uh, I believe it is twenty dollars on. Okay, that's not too bad. I believe it is twenty dollars on. Because this is not a sixty dollars game to me. Oh no! By any means, uh, it is not out yet, which is another thing. It doesn't have an. Uh, yeah, it's a TBA right it now. It's a TBA, but I'm sure it's going to be twenty bucks. There's no way that they're going to charge arm and a leg unless this thing is ten hours long, maybe. But even still, uh, um, pretty much all we have from PAX East is smaller projects because we talked about borderlands last week yeah so, and we we now have the characters yeah we can touch on that really quick if uh want. the characters are as follows let me unlock my phone don't don't so yell at me we did you watch pax east at all no nope. okay so pax east they finally announced borderlands 3 they showed us a trailer and they announced the re-release of uh one two in the pre-sequel as well 
Uh, just one as far as I Oh, saw. I thought it was one and two. Mm-hmm. Two, okay. two is already at its peak pinnacle. It okay. still has 4K, 144 refresh rate. That's so like a like a HD collection right. type of thing. Um, but with upgrades of new weapons and stuff like that. For the get. first one, that's it. So for three, uh, we got a trailer, but we didn't get too much information. Now we've gotten another trailer. It both gives us a date and character names. September 19th, or September 13th, mm-hmm. it will come out. And uh, the characters look very interesting. Uh, Moe's, who looks like e- they either have a giant mech or they seem to have something to do with explosives. Uh, Flack, FL4K, that seems to have a skag follower. I, and in the trailer, it, it shows little hearts above its head, all cutesy. Uh, Amara, who looks to be the goddess Shiva with a, a multitude of fists. And I, I put here in my notes, fist, fist, fist fist with like a whole bunch of question marks so i i honestly don't know what that'll entail it looked like uh uh the god of creation and destruction shiva uh, yeah uh, where um she ended up standing there and she did like a like a flex or something she was kind of floating and then yeah, all, all these, the arms like, holographic arms kind of showed up behind her yeah. in different positions and then uh zane who has this uh, arm drone and i was like oh neat uh he looked old he looked like a uh an old um atlas worker what in the timeline, Atlas is shut down. Atlas is gone. So I'm kind of curious on it, what he's going to come in through. I'm hoping he was one of the Atlas workers that stayed alive. I've only played one and most of two. I haven't played the... I have the pre-sequel and I have the Telltale game. I haven't played them yet. Mm-hmm. And the major antagonists are called the Calypso Twins. So I'm curious on what their angle is, considering they just look like Mad Max angry. Well, you don't need much more than that. We got three... Four Mad Max movies out of Mad Max Angry. <laughs> so, you're, you're, you're right. And a video game that was actually really good. <laughs> you're right. Um, so we'll move on to uh, Castlevania Wannabe. Castlevania Wannabe, it is made by the director of Castlevania, so it kind of melts into it. Uh, Bloodstained, Ritual of the Night, it kind of takes its name directly from Symphony of the Night. It has uh, the same font. It is the same <laughs> font. It looks it's pretty the, similar. The poster looks the same. Well, not the same, but like... You can tell the poster was very much made like, oh, we need to make yeah, a Castlevania th- poster. There's a card right favorite, there. I think my favorite 2D scroller game was Castlevania. Like, that was... I still remember the opening scene. What is a man? Throw the da- the daiquiri glass. <laughs> <laughs> a miserable pile of secrets? <laughs> How about you? How about you? <laughs> so, that doesn't necessarily mean this game's going to be a, a bad or good, though. Because it could be great in the sense that it's pulling everything from castlevania and that's you know jesus Christ. makes it good Look that's that totally art. the fucking castle in the background that is like, yeah. that is depth <laughs> um, uh, all right enough of that but then it could also be bad in the fact that it tries to be too much like castlevania without being castlevania i so. mean i mean i've i played the first bloodstained it was not great running but it it played like a castlevania game I, i'm not too angry about it uh, is I this a scroller? Or? It is uh, exactly like castlevania symphony of the night like oh, okay. down to the finest just nicer like, graphics i'm sure yeah i mean See, it's oh yeah, yeah. You got your little mana bar, you got your health bar, normal, and then your little mini map. I'm not top. sure I like how the characters look against the background. Yeah, yeah, I mean, kind of I, weird... this is early. This is way early. That's okay. like a beta still. Hopefully, yeah. Because this is this that's... is when this is when it was delayed. The characters look good, but that is a rough background. Yeah, hold on. Let's see this one. How's that? That's better. That's better. Yeah, that looks a lot. It's better. not great, but it's better. Well, yeah. that's just concept. Oh, and I arts. like. I like that. Yeah, I that's like... concept arts, though. Okay, yeah, I like those. That. Aren't screenshots? No. Yeah, this is. Uh, we'll have to wait a little bit more. This just oh, hit yeah. a Pax East, and it doesn't have a release date, does it? Uh, I believe it does not. I, I think it says. G- g- yeah, uh, it just says 2019. Yeah. Okay, so, and it's on the Unreal Engine four, which is an okay engine. So. Now something that going from something so high down to something so low, we have. Uh, I'm a big fan of burnout. I, mm-hmm. I enjoy crashing cars. That's no secret. So you have the art directors and major texture artists from uh, Burnout Three specifically, and a game that looks dangerously like Burnout Three, but with some. Uh, tweaks if you want to call it that it seems to be that they're just trying to make another burnout without the burnout name because it yeah. it has the font it has the little nitro bar that grows with each takedown down at the bottom it's too similar and i'm worried after that... revenge they all kind of felt the same to me yeah, for I burnouts mean, i mean once they i mean that slow funny. motion crash stuff that kind of set their that was their staple and that was the most badass thing you could do at the time like in, for games for me that i was like man that's so cool You're and right. then paradise came out and still did the same thing it just kind of looked like a cleaner version of revenge 
So I keep thinking like a lot of times these games are just kind of getting refreshed and not really innovative. I mean, there was one similar to this. Uh, you ever play Road Rash back in like the early 90s? It doesn't sound familiar. Uh, you're a biker and you just hit people with <laughs> sticks and whatnot as you know, you'd know you ride by. That never got an up, uh, like an extra one. I think the latest one was like 98. And then all of a sudden it just disappeared. Then about 2016, someone pulled up a few texture things and began to work on a today's modern Road Rash. And it, uh, Road Redemption, I believe it is called. And, I mean, it's 20 bucks on Steam. It's indie. It's it's crowdfunded. It's doing its hardest to do it for itself. And it looks great. It plays okay from what some people are saying. But it's still getting updates. Yeah, I mean... But like for burnout, I, for, it's just mm. gonna be it's gonna be the same game to me unless they add. I mean, unless you're gonna make it like a weird Mario Kart hybrid and you add abilities <laughs> and like weapons to the cars. But I, mean, I get you can't really do much else. I mean, it's a driving at game. That yeah, point, you're I racing. Twisted metal back. Ooh. Exactly. <laughs> like, like, give me that's, twisted metal. I mean, twisted metal. Graphics. Twisted metal would be another good one. Yes. Yeah, I mean, what, can, what else can you do to a See, driving? I don't game? like racing games, so I'll play twisted metal all day. <laughs> I love racing. games. I'm bad at racing games. It's not that I have anything against them. I just suck, you'd, so you'd no... rather turn around and run into people. Yeah. Well, that's probably why I don't like battle royale games, honestly. Because you're bad. Hmm. At them. Yep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm bad at them too, but I don't have them as much as you do. <laughs> I, I yeah, they're so toxic. Oh my god! Can you please? <laughs> so this Quit one swearing is... in my Christian server. <laughs> this one's uh, in, indivisible. 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 Um, uh, this one here is crowdfunded. Uh, it was at the indie booth at uh, PAX, and most of the artists I just enjoy in general. Uh, one of which is like early Final Fantasy with the way it's set up. That's exactly. Uh, it uh, takes hints from uh, Valkyrie Chronicle, uh, Valkyrie Profile, and it takes hints from other things. And they're saying that this is going to be a very long game. Uh, most of the artists I follow on uh, Tumblr, <laughs> rest in peace. Uh, and the reason why I say rest in peace is most of them do not safe for work pieces. They, they do dirty drawings. They do dirty drawings. Now, is this a turn-based game? This is going to be turn-based from the look of it. It seems to be um, time to uh, time to attack, and then you can stack your abilities and right. whatnot. Use um, items and shit. Yeah, it seems to be a pretty good build. Um, they gave everyone overpowered, as you can see from this. Uh, it's not supposed to be this strong. They were just trying to showcase what this game can do. Um and I'm I'm excited. I'm I'm thoroughly wanting a good JRPG that isn't Persona right now. <laughs> it almost looks like it could be a mobile game. Um, Since you they... brought it up, Persona's got an announcement. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Persona Five is uh, rumored to head over to the Switch. I mean, I think that's pretty straightforward. Their promising cause... information will be dropped on the twenty fifth. I mean, that's fine and fair, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be for the Switch due to the fact that Joker, the main character, is going to be in Smash later on this year. Yeah. So, I mean, if you're going to have a character from a game franchise that isn't on the Switch, put it on the Switch. So, I haven't played Persona anything. Um, one, five, a billion. I haven't played any of them. However, five's been out since 2016. Is this still the most current Persona? Yes. Well, it's technically Persona Q2, but okay. it's non-canonical. Okay. So, we're supposed to be getting excited about them bringing a game to a platform that came out three years ago? They're not connected. They're not connected. It's all A-OK. -okay. I mean, as far as... I'm, I'm not it... saying anything about the connection. Oh, you're I'm just saying, saying, oh, an, an old game that's not well, not too, too old, like, but... Don't get me wrong. I'm all for bringing old games to the, the new consoles and whatnot, but oh, you're saying the fact that it's been three years and we still don't have a new game. I mean... And you're like, get excited because we're putting it on this console that you probably weren't even considering playing it on anyways. Well, when did Q2... When did Q2 come out? When did Q2 come out? Okay, Q2 uh, is coming out in very soon. Okay, so... That'll be the next one. For that, oh, is, no, it, it's already out. I'm sorry. Oh, it's, it's already out. out. Okay. It's, it's a 3DS game, though. It is a 3DS game. So they haven't even released a new console version. Ah. Uh... Whatever. I don't play Persona, so it doesn't really matter to me. Wow. <laughs> but it, wow. It's just a little little odd that they've gone so long between game releases. I mean, I know, I know it takes a while to make a game. Yeah. And I mean, that and the story between Personas are actually really good. Okay. So, I mean. How many hours does a Persona game take? Um, I'm at 32 hours on my Persona 5 playthrough, and I'm not even halfway from what I'm gathering. Okay. But then again, I'm slow at it because I want to work on social links. So I'm like, it could take, if you, if you pile through everything, you could probably get done 25, 30 hours. Okay. Well, I look forward to whatever the news is on the 25th, I guess. Hopefully it's something more than just coming to the Switch, but I, I don't have high hopes. So, I mean, um, 
Now, I've got uh, a few things here. Okay. Ace Attorney will be hitting the eShop for its trilogy this week. So, anyone that hasn't been able to play the Ace Attorney games like me, that'll be good. Except for the fact I don't have a Switch, so it won't be. <laughs> but, it is bringing them in. Um, and they are coming out with a new game, so it'll be nice to have the whole thing in one spot. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I've, I've played the first two, and I've enjoyed them. They're, they're very, very well put together. They have methodical reasoning behind oh this was the murder weapon why was it oh because this oh okay it's just it takes a bit from what you really think about lawyer basically trying to prove the innocence of your people but through investigating through yeah you're so basically half detective yeah half it's It's a fun it's a fun concept one of them spoilers the big twist is that you prove that he didn't do something because of x reason which then puts him at the spot for a different crime yeah. So it, it's a very well thought out series. And so having it come to the console is nice, especially with the new game coming. Yeah. Um, this one I know very little about, but only because I prefer another type of game. Uh, it is called Eratus Eratus. This is another Pax East one. Right? This is another Pax East one. Uh, it reminds me of Darkest Dungeon, but I would rather play Darkest Dungeon because this one looks like it just has a lot of subsystems. You're going to dark. Yeah, right. oh, that's coming up. What am I looking at? Oh, that's coming up. There you go. All those screen images are just dark. Yeah, it. it I mean, Darkest Dungeon looks, a, in my opinion, a lot better than this. You see all this down at the bottom. It just looks like jumble to me. I don't know, but when you look at let's let's pull up Darkest Dungeon. So it what kind of looks of like Diablo in a way. This? Kind of. I can tell. I can see a little bit of Diablo yeah, in that. Like a cheaper version. Yeah. Like a little like a Game Boy. <laughs> a Game Boy bit, Diablo. You know what? A little bit like that. Uh speaking of uh Diablo, Diablo 2 is in the rumor mill and I'm hoping that they oh. get their get their stuff figured out. See, look at this. This looks much more simple. Much more. This is all your abilities for the character you're using. Okay. This is what he's wearing and then this is the map. That's it. So this There's, is Darkest Dungeon. This is Darkest Dungeon. To, and what was the other one called? Uh uh Eritus Eratus. Okay. Eratus. And so it's just like a dungeon crawl uh kind of dungeon crawler turn-based loot uh people can lose sanity even though they're undead i don't that know it's, yeah, it's, it's kind of weird it's a bit crazy but uh from the gameplay that i saw it just looked to be a darkest dungeon clone but with dead things well i mean well I, i'll wait till i see more i guess yeah i mean that doesn't really speak to me now this one speaks loud and this clear. one's another as piper would put it two story uh side uh, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> two story <laughs> He made the. You didn't hear him. He said two stories. Earlier, I had a 2D. tongue twist. I said a two story <laughs> yes, instead of a two D. I did. I yeah. okay. Um, I'm very slow tonight. No. This one's interesting. Uh, it just it's gonna be coming out this month. It's gonna be coming out the okay. 18th, and I'm gonna show Piper a little bit of the the, the gameplay. I'm gonna skip ahead of if. Oh please. So it's like neon. It's got like um, time rewinding like you have the ability to rewind time. If you, well i, I, if you I think if you die i think if you die you head back to the beginning of the room no because I, I what you showed me they weren't heading back to the beginning of the room they were just redoing what they last had tried it didn't work out the way they had tried so they rewound it oh. it's like it kind of reminds did you play braid Mm-mm. okay no that's what it reminds me of and that's i mentioned that to uh justin as well and he's like i didn't play that <laughs> damn I, um, I i heard braid was really good though braid was okay i, I think braid got a little bit of hype uh because I burn through the levels quick if I'm not trying to 100% the levels. Like, the game is easily beatable without trying to 100% it. Um, but if you want to 100% it, that's when the, the game actually starts to take a while and you start to put more time into it. Um, he cannot get this YouTube link. To yeah, it's 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 fine. But from those little pictures, it kind of looked like, um, oh, what's his name? Mega Man? Yeah, a little bit. Looked like a Mega, little bit like, it looked like Zero. You have a... A little bit. I mean, it, it had Zero in the title. Uh, it was uh, called uh, Kintana Zero. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So, yeah, so you're like a samurai. A samurai, and you were named the dragon. Oh, yeah, this is Mega Man all day. But yeah, samurai. But, but much faster. Oh, yeah. It is uh, one shot, you die, and you rewind. It, see, it looks like he gets killed in order for him to refresh the room. Oh, okay. See? Yeah, yeah. Like well, which was basically how Braid worked. You could, you could play with the time to control things, but the main thing was if you died, you rewound to undie and try to do it a different way yeah and uh you can literally slow down time hit bullets with your thing uh hey i love devolver digital because they know how to put good soundtracks i wish i can unmute it so that way you can hear it it is stellar soundtrack it's a little bit of vaporwave with a little bit of hype kick to it it oh god i like that motorcycle scene too that's that's kind of new 
I yeah. like they're kind of letting you do some new stuff in the 2D. De- Devolver knows how to hit those notes, and I love it. I love Devolver. I love. I hope to see some more of these great things at E3 this year. Because they're even their even their announcements are off the wall when uh, at E3. The last two years they've had this uh, straight faced woman. I do not remember her name, but uh, she's very very irritable to say the least she comes out angry with a with a loaded six shooter and starts shooting in the air to get the crowd to calm down that sort of thing i don't get why in 2019 though games are still coming out in 8-bit like that style some because it's a it's become a people want it to be retro style thing some people prefer it some people actually enjoy seeing it because it can move faster than polygonal 64 bit textures i suppose it would cause less motion sickness for some people like motion blurs out of the picture at that point some some then you have games like no man's sky where things move too fast at too much bit rate and you're just like uh yeah I actually so, saw an ad for No Man's Sky the other day for something new they're doing, and I was like, "Freaking Sean, wow. Mur- Sean Murray is doing God's work. He is saying, I this game will be VR ready by the middle of this year.'" And I'm yeah. like, "Hey, if you want No Man's Sky to be VR ready, and you are not making it a brand new game where people have to buy it, you know what? You have my blessing, and you have my thanks. I mean, I I personally don't have the the PlayStation VR, but." I would actually lean out and go and get but it. I do. I yeah, know you do. I got it too. <laughs> I, mean, and I'm tell- I, I can play Skyrim for 10 minutes walking because you have an option in that game to run or walk. And you can't run because if you run, you're going to fall over. Well, I guess for, life, I guess for uh, Virgin VR people who haven't, <laughs> who haven't really gotten into it too much and you've only played stationary games like Beat Saber, oh, Job okay. Simulator, games like that. When you get into a game that you can just press a button and he starts walking, but your physical body isn't walking. You lean with it. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. You know, you, we all remember how Skyrim opens, right? You're on the cart and you're all going in to get hung or not hung, get your head chopped off. So it just fades you in, and I'm a dumbass and standing, because I forget, it, it spawns you in sitting down. So I learned my lesson. If you play this game, put a chair right behind your legs. So every now and then you could sit down. Because right when that game came in, <laughs> and I'm looking straight, and the cart jerks you to the left, and everything starts moving to the right, I fucking fell over. Right on, luckily onto my couch. Oh my god! But that was a whole oh shit. I had to pause the game. I brought a chair up and sat down. I was like, "All right, cool. Now I'm on the wagon." Right. So now, bring a chair for that game. How was Doom in VR though? Jesus, Doom is fast. Uh, I, it's, I, I mean, it's faster than the regular game just because you can. The movement in there is the teleport style. Yeah. So you're just kind of teleporting everywhere. And it's very, very easy to kill stuff in that game. Okay. So it does feel like you're flying through it. But it is just so in your face, oh, yeah. just well, high pace. That's what Doom is now. Exactly. Uh, I that's played what Doom in, always was. To yeah, be I, fair. <laughs> yeah, I played the same exact thing at the uh, GameStop Expo in 2017. Uh, it it is. Oh yeah. It is. It mash. Gets you. Yep. I think all VR games should be called VFR though. I'm a fan of that. VFR. Yeah, that's, that's what, what that's called. what Doom is. It's called Doom VFR. Doom Virtual Fucking Reality. Oh. <laughs> Okay, I, I never, I never, I, I never noticed that. <laughs> yeah. mm. Be a uh, sword. This one, I, 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 I'm neutral to, but I, I figured Quincy, considering he's a comic book fan and he loves noir settings, I figured he might actually enjoy. Yeah. It. So you had me look at this. This is Liberated. Um, it's just got a release date of 2019 right now. Um, it's actually moving through comic panels. Uh, it's a 2D. Uh, well, not even 2D, but it's a side scroller. Hmm. Um. I don't know. I feel like this is a mashup of several things we've seen recently, because I mentioned that it kind of reminds me of Limbo. Mm-hmm. Uh, it looks um, like inside. Setting, yeah. It looks like inside. Uh, and then there's a few other things that it reminds me of. I'm not against it per se, but I feel like they kind of leaned on the fact that it's comic book a little too. It looks much. like a mix of a Telltale game and uh, the other one you mentioned. A limbo. Limbo. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, I could see that. So, I want to see more from it. And then I'll make my own decision. Uh, do we know if it's coming to console or is it purely PC? Uh, as of right this point in time, I believe it's just PC. Okay. Well, if it's just PC, that's that's fine. Um, I'm I'll eventually look. get to it. I'm a looking. I'm a looking. Uh, from now, it's just PC. Okay. Um, let's move on to Tiny Metal. Okay. Uh, I used to play Advance Wars, and I mean it's not too bad. I, Again, that's one that I had nothing to. Yeah, I don't, it's I don't know it's a that. it's a tactics thing where it's like playing Stratego. 
in the new age where this beats this this beats this this beats this if you hold on to these you can wait till you use them for this uh using units to move tactically across a very very grid based board normal stuff xcom kind of xcom you can at least hit from a distance okay. with these you have a smaller distance and if you move towards something you have to figure they can also move towards you so tiny metal is another game in the in this vein yes okay and the internet ain't working uh he showed me earlier it's kind of cartoony style and honestly the little characters the little guys remind me of the like boom beach characters from the oh, mobile game yeah okay yeah a little bit a little bit they don't have mouths they they just go in with their little tiny helmets and little tiny toy gun looking things i'm all for shoot. strategy games i actually love mutant year zero um i haven't played XCOM, but that's one i've been interested in uh so i'm all for another strategy game yeah what do you want to talk about about this one because i'm done talking about this game <laughs> wow. I, uh, I mean, it's going to be, again, the same game. I'm, it's well, just going to. The problem be... is, it's 10 pissed me off. I loved 9. 10 pissed me off. And For those I'm... who don't know, we're talking about Mortal Kombat. Yeah, sorry. Mortal yeah. Kombat. <laughs> Mortal Kombat 11. I just wanted to mention that, you know, that it's coming to Switch. Uh, it's going to do its sternest to be all good, at least as best as it can. Uh, they had to outsource for Switch, from what you were telling me. I, I do believe that's what it was. If it wasn't outsourced for Switch, it was outsourced for PC. I can't remember which, though. Okay. Well, even still, it's very strange, but NetherRealm still did probably most of the textures and whatnot, and they probably had to get downgraded it through. looks pretty. I it mean, I'm still going to get it. I'll play, I, like, like, <laughs> I was telling Justin, I was, I'll probably get it, but I won't pre-order it, and I won't pay full price for it. Yep, or get a collector's edition. Yeah. Mm. Done that already. Because Oopsie don't need another scorpion statue. There was the stuff with 10 where I ordered it for the 360 because I didn't have the one yet. Mm. And my order, uh, the 360 got pushed back by three months versus the one's release. And I was like, well, that's crap. Yeah. And then it got pushed back again and then again. And then they just re- re- uh, removed the release date. And then just one day, they're like, oh, yeah, it's not coming out. Oh, yeah, we gave up on that. So you can have your money back. That's yeah, we so gave I'm like, up. are you fucking kidding me? And their excuse was, well, it's just, it's so good on one. It's so good on one. <laughs> it's so bad. And then I that play you it. have to buy a one. <laughs> I suck at fighting games. I beat it in one day. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, you introduced all these new, spoilers, you introduced all these new characters to kill them. Uh, well, and not, okay. in the, not in the fact that it's Mortal Kombat, but in the fact of like, some of them didn't even make it through to like halfway through the game. And weren't they like <laughs> some of the main characters' kids and shit? Yeah. yeah. Uh, then they killed like series running characters like that. Just yeah. gone. Where'd Johnny go? Uh, not Johnny. Oh, John- I thought Johnny died like somewhere down the line. I think Johnny made it to the end. I didn't even. Johnny, play it past, I like, know Johnny two. had a, a zombie John- Johnny skin. I think they did it for all of them. Oh, really? Yeah, but I could oh, be wrong. Okay. Uh, no. Uh... Mm. Razor teeth mouse bitch. Um, Razor teeth uh, mouse bitch. Melina. Yeah. Melina. Uh, they kill Melina off in a cutscene, not even in a fight. She does. She doesn't lose a I fight think I to did die. See that. She dies in a cutscene. And I'm like, are you fucking serious? <laughs> Melina was like one of the baddest bitches in this game. Like, yeah. She would eat people's heads. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. Maybe Eleven will fix some stuff. All, All right. right. What is this? Bananas. Oh, my friend Pedro. Okay. Yeah. I just saw bananas. I was like, what the hell are we looking yeah, at? Bananas. So this one sounds interesting uh i i just gave you the basic of basic synopsis yeah. uh devolver Devol- yeah <laughs> uh devolver makes another pretty good game it's pretty much in the same vein as katana zero that we talked about not too too long ago where the music is on point you dive through windows on a skateboard and just unleash hell you have two uzis use them you can aim it, it's meant for a controller where your left stick is one gun, the right stick is the other, and you just go automatically. But, oh, I was like, I mean, at least the triggers I think, are matching? Because that makes sense. You know, yeah, I think that's how... Left is left, right is right. I think that's how it works, but I think it just goes automatically. I think you're in a forward momentum no matter what. Like a Galaga shooter just keeps shooting? Kind of. I, uh, I, I When he was explaining this to me, I was like, so is this very John Woo-esque? And I, I began to think about it, and I said, yes, with minus the doves. Minus the and then I began to think about it again, and I was like, wait, one of the cutscenes I think has doves coming out. I think it paid an homage. This one to it. again looks fun, but this is yet again a game where if it's more than twenty bucks, I'm not getting it. Yeah, it looks like a I Sunset think Overdrive kind of. Kind of. Like, but it looked, like he was skate- it looked like he was skating on yeah. the power he gets, lines. He gets yeah. the skates. Uh, I and- get what you're saying, but like on a side scroller status because it's not a full roam 3D. Oh, so it's it's, it's- a Jet Set Radio. I kind okay. of actually. <laughs> Just not spray paint cans, yeah, no mo. But bullets, Uzis. Uh, and the other, the other <laughs> interesting, spray paint cans. the other yeah. interesting thing that this game has is it's 
puzzle like rooms where you have to use ricochet shots and all that and i i saw a little bit of it and of how things happen like you can goldberg machine rube goldberg machine like create trigger a, something yeah so you said goldberg machine and the first thing i thought of was goldberg from wrestling <laughs> yeah Steve and then you goldberg, said rude and i was like oh okay <laughs> goldberg, goldberg. Gotcha. um no, i mean it looks cool but like i said uh, june 2019 um give me a price and we'll talk but i'm not gonna pay over 20 I'm pretty sure it's going to either be 20. I think at most it'll probably be 30 just because... If it's 30, it better come with like a season pass. Uh, I don't think it'll have that, but I think it'll be a pretty long game. Costumes, something. I think it'll be a pretty long game considering this has been in production for a while. Okay. So So this next one is one that was actually announced first day. No, go back to the first one. Oh, this one? Yeah. This was announced first day uh, during the Borderlands announcements and everything. Oh, yeah. You got insanely excited. I got beyond hyped. So, um... You went home and played it, right? Uh, yeah, and then I lost track of time. And then it was three hours later. It's usually later. a good sign. It was three hours later. Um, so a friend of mine gave me this from Discord. Uh, he threw it at me and said, here you go, you know, we'll play some. And playing some turned into play a lot, and I already unlocked all the characters and most of the regular unlockables, and I want more content. And they said they're going to release more content. Where is my content? Please, content. Um... So it's Risk of Rain two because I don't think he actually I said that. I did not. I did not. I've been. <laughs> I like. I. I actually. I have withdrawals right now. That's how. This is a. This is a good game. It's already over five hundred thousand players. Now what is it? Uh, it is a. Okay, if you've ever played Risk of Rain one, Risk of Rain one is a two D. Just jump around, shoot enemies, kill the enemies. Uh, start up this teleporter. As you hit the teleporter, a big boss spawns. Kill the big boss. Wait until the teleporter is charged. Take the teleporter. Rinse. Repeat. You die, you start all over. There is nothing no keeping. Points. Yeah, no checkpoints, no nothing. Uh, every area has like these chests that you open up for cash that after you kill enemies, you get the cash. You open up chests. They give you the one-time items that you're going to have for your run. The items range anywhere between stacking up abilities, why not, to just being overall buffs. Now, Risk of Rain 2 does that, but in three dimensions, and it plays so goddamn good and it's multiplayer and it is multiplayer and i've heard rumors of crossplay do not quote me on that but the rumors i'm hoping begin to pull in and say yes the day crossplay launches is the day i start actually talking to people from high school again to see who i can play with yeah <laughs> because I mean, like i barely have people to play with now on my own console but as soon as we go crossplay, it's gonna go insane <laughs> i mean the only downside is this is pc right now it is available for PC on the early access, and they said that later on it'll be for consoles. I'm hoping when the consoles come out, it'll have a all-in-one... I'm sure even if it doesn't go cross-play, I'm sure they'll probably do a PC to Microsoft. Oh, more than likely, considering Microsoft Games, I think, helped out make this. Yeah, it's Microsoft but... Windows. Yeah, so I'm hoping maybe it'll it'll push for it. Even still, I'm I'm wanting it. It's it's such a good game with multiple players. Even on your own, they don't they don't severely nerf you like Risk of Rain One did, where it's just you trying to earn all the money, and it becomes uh, just a downhill downhill struggle if you don't get the right items. With Risk of Rain Two, with friends, you you can just have maybe two to three items, and yeah, sure you're a little underpowered, but you can stay alive. It's not as difficult, and that's just on normal difficulty. It makes me wonder what's on impossible difficulty, but. It, it's a great game. It is a fantastic game. I recommend it. Twenty bucks. It no longer has the buy one going free, but it is worth every penny for the twenty dollars. Yeah, for the first day they had it, it was you buy one, you get one for a friend. Yeah. So that was also pretty cool. Yeah. What's this last thing you got right here? Oh, uh, I played a little bit of uh, Sekiro: Shadows. Oh, this is the one with the weird. Oh arm. yeah, this is the one that has the trailer that doesn't tell you nothing about the game. <laughs> You're damn right it doesn't. <laughs> Even like, the game performer, I was a little bit like, wait, what am I? Wait, hold on, let me start over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, sure, it looked kind of cool, but I'm like, what? what's the game? <laughs> okay, the, the, the game is... What is it? Remember, never betray your master. Like, the only thing you get to hear? That's pretty much it. <laughs> uh, that's what you get. But it's a From Software game, so if you've played Dark Souls and the slightest, you have an idea of it. Uh, oh, so Blackboard. this is a get good game. Oh. Uh, I'm they, out. Believe it or not, <laughs> believe it or not, they actually, they actually asked for a easy mode. For it they actually asked I'm back in <laughs> yeah they actually asked for a uh uh let me see watch someone defeat all the bosses and yeah without getting hit uh here we go celeste creator outlines how a secure easy mode could work and i'm like no it can't because it you have to actually become a samurai in order to be good at this game you have to parry proper you have to understand how the attacks work proper you have to understand how spears work proper now if it if it plays like for honor 
I can, I'm in. I can play that. So how how are they going to implement? Is it like more combo based? Is it going to be it is ability based? Poise based. And I shook my head when you were when you were saying for honor because for honor allows you to basically rock paper scissors it and allows you to choose to a certain degree. Yeah, yeah. It's rock paper scissors on which direction, and then you of course have uh, your special ability to like brunt them back. This one kind of has those kind of abilities, but not necessarily paper rock paper scissors. It's more. Do you attack them to weaken their poise, or do you attack them when their guard is open? And it does minimal damage, but you have to keep picking them out. Or you can parry their move to get a better attack on them, a death blow, if you will. Mm. So it's pick and choose your moments, try and get the better of them. And the fact that right now someone already has, and it's only been out for less than two weeks, and someone already has a no-hit run. On on this very very difficult game, I will say it is still difficult. <laughs> so so it's kind of a like mid boss a, kicked my ass. So it's kind of like Shadow Warrior then, kind of sort of. Kind of sort of Shadow Warrior is at least beatable. Yeah, I mean that game kind of just felt. I mean it was so weird, and it kind of leaves you out there to like yeah figure out where to go on your own. It, like what? <laughs> it it is a bit. Where was uh, my objective? There like, <laughs> they, they, there is no objective marker. Yeah, that, there is none. I yet. got so lost. I definitely oh. have not beat that game. I've have probably hours <laughs> into it and maybe seen if there are any cutscenes. One. Yikes. Yeah, I don't know where to go. Okay, that, uh, <laughs> I'm just uh, running around the palace like there's nobody here. <laughs> there would there would be a, a defining factor to try and get some map markers on certain games shadow warrior would probably be one of those that would benefit from it i, I still Sekiro, think, no i still think the by far the best directional system in the game for letting you know where to go is dead space you just press the button and it oh, gives you a little line <laughs> yeah. i'm like perfect and i need to go that way yep. i i would or i'll even take alien isolation your little radar yeah, yeah, and the little blip yeah. i'm like I'm, that's all i need <laughs> just i'm good point me in a direction that, now that the, would be smart the <laughs> whole we're Ooh, talking about dark souls down. we're talking about Sekiro. so obviously get good came up the get good thing's starting to annoy me because it's starting to invade other games it is yeah. because I was looking up something for a game the other day where I was just wondering. I was like, "What happens if I do this instead?" I wasn't trying to like, "How do I beat this boss or something?" And someone was just like, "Get good and figure it out." I'm like, "I just wanted to know what the other option." Was. This isn't even a fight. This is a dialogue thing. Like, come on! And yeah. you just pulled this up. I just pulled go ahead, go the, ahead and read uh, that. The Google, the Google. Uh... Uh, reviews. reviews yeah. uh, it says, "Get good." These words have never rang any truer. As long as Soulsborne veteran, I will begin. Oh, oh, as a long time Soulsborne veteran, I will begin by saying that Sekiro is one of the most difficult, if not the most difficult, of the genre. Now we should probably give a shout. Out. This is William Vickery. Yeah, William Vickery. Thank uh, you. We totally stole your shit offline. <laughs> oh, and he has a long review that we won't. Yeah, get, uh, we won't get into that. But he says six point five out of ten. Uh, eight point five. Eight point five. Excuse me. We need to get a better monitor. But it's hey, fine. To be Everything. Fair, this is a TV, not a monitor. <laughs> well, yes. But even still, I I concur with the eight point five. It is it is fair in its judgment, albeit the timing is a little weird when you're trying to parry some heavy attacks. It it does feel a bit clunky at times. But is it worth sixty bucks? Yeah. Yeah, I don't uh, mind a difficult game. I don't mind a difficult game. Me going and having to understand and learn the game. That I will follow the whole get good thing. And I have played uh, Dark Souls. My main issue with Dark Souls was when I go in and it's just like, oh, you want to know what the controls are? Sorry. Like, now, well, no, no, <laughs> Dark Souls has those little blimps that when you walk up and you hit them, it's like the tutorial little yeah. wisps that you run up to, kind of like ghost things or whatever. Yeah, the, the, I, the I've the played scrolls. the beginning mission like five times. I haven't gotten past it, but <laughs> as for me, I, I I can do it blindfolded. The other the other complaint I have about Dark Souls is remove the dragon noises at the beginning. There's no dragon, so remove the dragon noises at the well, beginning. It's not I'm, a dragon; it's a demon. Okay, remove the demon noises. I'm no fine demon. with the hard a hard game, demon. but give me just when quick save for me. Don't make me go to a fucking campfire after you fight that first fat thing in that first room and you go up and you're on that balcony there's another demon there oh okay yeah yeah i thought it was just leftover sound for something they didn't put in nope you're the one that told me it was (laughs) no i didn't mean to then but no (laughs) bitch okay so 35 to 70 hours for sakura yeah average that's on average to beat sakura which is this like 100 percent of the game or is this just uh, fighting this is i think casual is the 35 uh, 35, I think. Hold on, I'm bringing up the statistics. It's somewhere down here. Oh, this is not the I want to know if anyone's done a speed run on it yet. Uh, they're trying to right now. There's a couple of people. Um, 
here we go. Uh, so main story uh, is about 25 hours on average. Okay. You know, the Midian is about 26 hours on Leisure Rushed. 34. But if you're wanting all the completionist stuff, 61 hours on average. Yeah, I like that. That makes me want to spend. Well, it says you, you can rush the main story in 17 hours, with probably skipping cutscenes and yeah. stuff. Yeah, this is speed run. This is speed running tactics. Uh, there's a person who already logged their speed run at one hour 42 minutes. Is that and someone just hitting the freaking skip button like that's crazy? uh that's someone skipping most of the story so it's like skipping everything that's skipping yeah. everything so it makes me wonder if this is legitimized if it is uh, hey power to you kid so now here's the thing i just i played resident evil 2 uh, a couple weeks back a couple months back and i was six hours something like that mm-hmm. those Eight numbers hours, don't like that. those numbers don't make sense to me because even the main story rushed there that says 17 hours and this guy's saying he did it in an hour and 42 so you're telling me there's there's someone out there that well it took th- someone else 16 hours to do the same thing i think this is rushed over pulled i think this is what is pulled because single player main story doing the full main story and then this is speed run where it's skipping things it's like right. i don't need to fight that boss bye so but in that sense he only played that game for an hour and 42 minutes and yep. made it through all that stuff that would take a normal person 25 hours you want to see what's even more? so how many cut scenes are there yeah uh, there's a that's, yeah, that that's I've already like ran how into. long are these? Things? I ran into a freaking monkey that talked to me. I was freaked out. I don't want to talk about this anymore. <laughs> but with the Resident Evil thing, I, I clocked in like I don't know if it was six or eight hours. I got the B rating. Now I I know I could go back and do that game in a single night, next to no time, probably destroy through it. But I'm not gonna get anything from it. I'm not gonna fight anything. I'm not gonna get any story. But that's my thing is. I want to play the game first, get its story, and then I'll go through and try to do like a speedrun. Sure. Yeah. I like having an open world for that too. I like I like doing all the missions and then I'll go out to the free world and do my my uh mining as it were, looking for stuff and materials. <laughs> That's fine and fair. I mean, I'm not just, against that idea. You just made me think of production on The Witcher has been delayed because uh uh, uh, Henry Calvill gets too into character and starts accepting side quests. Yeah, I know, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and then how how long would you think Dark Souls Three would take you guys? Oh, um, I didn't even play through. Yeah. I'd, I'd, okay. Let's say it's plopped down in front of you. How long do you figure you would take to beat it? I don't like, know. I don't know how. I honestly have engaged? no experience with it at all. Well, the, the, the so the speed run you're showing me. So thirty three minutes and fifty one seconds. I'm probably thinking if you change what? that to hours. <laughs> no, that, this is well with with these games though is the way they make them is you can literally choose not to fight certain things. Yeah, you run past run past most it. things. Yeah, and what then, fun is that? Yeah, believe it or not, some people actually find the entertainment in. Well, I get, I've beaten the game normally. I'm gonna now just skip all that. Right, but I'm saying if you do that from the start, oh, like, if you're no, just going, no, I'm gonna no, no, stealth no, no, no. this whole game. Like, <gasps> looks over at his Metal Gear Solid Three European Extreme. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you have to. <laughs> I do have to say, sometimes I get pissed off at a Hitman level and I kill everyone, and other times I go through and spend two hours working on one level to do it as quietly and as perfect as possible to get the perfect kill. Oh, of yeah. course. So I I get it from both sides. It's just I have I don't I've been playing I played a little bit of Bloodborne and it took me so far so long to get past the werewolf at the beginning. The uh, cleric beast. Sure. And werewolf. They didn't need to rename him. <laughs> oh. So I get oh, out. Wow. I, I get out. I killed a bunch of shit out in the world, and then I died, and I don't fully understand how the checkpoints work in Bloodborne because everything I killed was back, and I was back where I came out of the damn building. I was like. Fuck this game. <laughs> that is that is a Soulsborne game. Yeah. Uh, Soulsborne game. You you sit down and rest. Everything that you recall is once more. Everything that you have done is once more. It's, just quick save for me. There, Come there, on. I, no, I want to know no, that I no. What happens if a power outage goes? What you get? You of course get your <laughs> progress saved, but when Actually, you come, my brother was playing Doom and the power went out here. Uh, right when he was starting to get into the heat of like the like, because he got the suit. Right. And he was just starting to get the flow of the game, and the power went out. And I was like, oh. And oh. the power comes back on, and we're like, son of a bitch. I mean, that's why I hate Dark Souls or games like that, is because I'd rather just, if I die, just let me redo the part that killed me. Yeah. You get, you, you I've get obviously some, made it through everything else. You, get the, you of course, get some bonfires or uh, lanterns between there, where you can just go straight to the boss, you know, so that we can fight right. the boss. But don't make me do it. I just want to... Quick save for me. 2019, don't make me save myself. There's two words Honestly. here on this checkboard here. Get good. <laughs> now, my, my thing is, is I want to know that what I'm doing in the game is making a difference. So when I go through and I clear out a whole area and then a beast sneezes at me and kills me, everything I did's undone. Or even if I don't die and I come back and everything's undone, I just I feel like I didn't accomplish anything. 
It's meant for grinding. It's I understand to... what it's meant for. Okay. I, I, I get it. I do. Okay. But it's just there's a certain level of I feel like I never achieve anything. Okay, I guess I can I can see that from a perspective. Because I totally get it. It's so that you can grind, so that you can work in the lower level areas, be, beast yourself up, and go and take on that fucking kraken looking motherfucker or whatever you're going to go fight. I fully understand the concept. I just, okay. I like to feel like I've achieved something. Okay, so fair, fair where, point. But as for I'm me, I'm a masochist. I, I, I played Resident Evil 7 on Madhouse. I've done so many runs of different weapons in Dark Souls 2. I, I've done it all. I'm... I just hate myself. <laughs> uh, I love myself. <laughs> I, I love myself, but in yeah, the wrong I way. I love myself, so I play Overwatch. <laughs> <laughs> and League of Legends and a bunch Do of other stuff. League? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, he's more of a nerd than he realizes. <laughs> yeah. I'm like I was on League like season two. When wow. I started, when I started, Further than me. Yeah, I started okay. a while back. So you pulled up Super Meat Boy Forever. So yeah, I've you, got you the, have fun with this. I've got the full breakdown for this. So Super Meat Boy was a game. And then they had a sequel. Yeah. And now they've got Super Meat Boy Forever, which was announced in 2014 and uh, was going to be a mobile game. And then somewhere around 2017, they went, why are we making it mobile? Let's make it for everything. And delayed the game so that they can make it for everything. And then said, it'll be out April of 2019. And then today said, it's not going to be out April of 2019. <laughs> Google so, still says so, though. Google still says so. Google's <laughs> not updated. Well, because they didn't give an actual date. Yeah, they just said April. It just needs to be changed to TBA, honestly. They didn't yeah. even say whether or not it's going to be 2019 now. They just said it won't be April. Which is funny, because it has screenshots. It has videos. That's the funny thing. So, here, I've got the thing. Super Meat Boy Forever won't hit April release. Uh, the team says, we've been knocking out the last bits of Super Meat Boy Forever. Sorry, I should say it's Super Meat Boy Forever, not Super Meat Boy. Mm. Um, at record speeds while keeping a healthy and sustainable pace. We're going to keep that pace, which means we will not hit our April 2019 release. Sorry about that. We could make sacrifice of mind, bodies, and souls but uh, to make April 2019, but that's stupid. This is their official <laughs> quote. <laughs> so someone tells me that's probably Edmund McMillan that says that, correct? Um, it was on a Twitter page. I'll, I'm going to throw it out there that it might be actually Edmund McMillan. Edmund McMillan is a very bright person. He has made games probably the last ten odd years. Like he he has made a lot of things. Um, he's made a lot of flash games back on Newgrounds. If you guys ever browse that, I, yeah. I guarantee you you've played something from Edmund McMillan. Um, and then of course you got Super Meat Boy, Binding of Isaac, The End Is Nigh, uh, the second Binding of Isaac, and then. You know, he continuously tries to update it, but it takes him a while. So he says, you know, what? I'm going to open up mod creation and allows for people to create mods for it. I just don't like the way he approaches some of these things sometimes. So they're saying the game's going to adapt based on your skill, which is cool. That's the fine and fair. Are, the harder the game gets. Makes sense. But, but um, how do you do that to a platformer? I don't know. Uh, they went on to talk about that while the team uh, meet acknowledges that... Uh, Game delays blow, we know. They also stand firm in their direction, uh, decision. Uh, team Meat, which is what they're calling themselves. <laughs> uh, they said Team Meat isn't owned by an evil asshat corporation that have uh, say over what uh, we do and have uh, and how we do it. We are a uh, fortunate. We are fortunate enough to have control over how we work, and we choose not to run ourselves into the ground. So I was remembering this wrong when we were talking about it earlier because okay. i was talking about another company um so i get what they're saying i get that you know we're gonna take our time and work on it and everything but seriously it's a platformer that you started working on in 2014 it's been five years that's ed mimic for you you picked the date of april we didn't tell you to pick april you went yeah, april, april and then went we're not ready yeah. so they're very much making it sound like it's us as an audience who's going what the fuck do you mean and we're like you're the one that said April, not us, dude. Right. Like, chill out. Um, I don't know. I haven't played any of the Super Meat Boy games. So, like, I, I know uh, what they are. I did play the first one, I believe. Because that was, it's like, um, like, N+, plus, where it's kind of like a puzzle platformer where there's, like, spikes and shit, and you have to, like, jump through the level yeah, and get think, to the yeah. other side. So, I think I did play the first one a little bit. So, I want to say maybe it was, like, on trial or came up free on Xbox, like, a uh, pro member reward whatever the gold member reward something like that i, I think i might have it for free because of the, being the gold member yeah as well. i think that's how i tried it once or i might be thinking of no it's not block theater uh, battle lock theater yeah it's not that that's not uh, the one that, i'm thinking of to be fair he also had his uh, stamper had his start on um new grounds new grounds and yes. he's 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 
very, very talented. It's just, damn, he's dumb. <laughs> so I got one more news thing, and then we're going to let Piper take over some music news, and then we're going to go into our discussion for the day. Okay. Oh, sorry, two more news things. Uh, Endgame tickets came out. Holy I got shit. mine. I don't have mine yet. I, um, uh, when money. you get yours, yeah, when you get yours, I'll throw mine in there and I'll pay you. Okay. Holy so, shit. Uh, it crashed multiple sites. Oh, yeah. The sales were so intense. Oh, yeah. They're estimating at a 20 to 50 million, uh, um, sorry, 200 to $250 million opening weekend <laughs> just because of these pre sales. That's not counting the people that aren't going to pre pre first. When does the movie come out? The towards the end of the month. 26th, I believe. 26th. Yeah. Well, I'm going on the 28th. That gives me more than enough time to get up, caught up on the MCU. Yeah, what is it, like a 22-hour marathon they have posted or something like that? Um, And the Russos are begging everyone to see it opening weekend because of how uh, Infinity War went. They're like, if you don't, it's going to get even. It's going to be Well, have you read anything or like kind of looked into the movie at all? Quincy owns the the book, but it's not, of course, it's an adaptation, but it kind of has the guideline of... I haven't looked too much into it. I don't want too many spoilers. I want to go in... Well, you also can't use that as too much of a judge if you look at how Civil War was supposed to go and And all that stuff. So you you can't use that as a good reference. If you look at how Infinity went versus how it's supposed to go. Everybody is saying that they're sure that people are going to perma-die. Oh, God. Everybody's talking about that right now. That's the the shit that everybody's talking about. We talked about this on another episode. I came across a really interesting theory where someone pointed out the fact that in every movie, Tony's left arm gets damaged. And so there's a theory that Cap's going to die and Tony's going to have to throw the gauntlet on his left arm and reverse the snap and it'll destroy his arm. Okay, it's better than the Ant-Man up the ass theory. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean real talk? Anything. Brolin's response. Real talk? Uh-uh. Brolin made a response and it's a photo of him sh- taking a shit. No, as hard it's as a possible. video. There's a video of him it's taking a It's a video shit. of him going, saying <laughs> that he's taking out Ant-Man. <laughs> Getting rid of Ant-Man. I like the little meme. It's like, it says somebody was like, let, can we just not ignore that Ant Man could fly into his, his nose or his nose, ear? Why does mouth? it have to be his ass? Yeah, I was that. talking about that because I don't like this meme. I think this meme is terrible. <laughs> Even though you're laughing at it and you're, I am enjoy- laughing at it because it is funny. I just don't like how hard people are pushing it. I'm like they're not going to do that, guys. Please stop. Oh, no. <laughs> you think that's the one thing Doctor Strange saw? <laughs> <laughs> yes, all the, that's the answer. <laughs> that's one of the things someone. <laughs> there's said. only one thing that will work. There's only one that's thing. One Scott, thing go someone, up the ass. <laughs> that's one of the things someone said. Where like when they when we saw these thousands. Of, of potential yeah. abilities, oh one of them had to be Ant Man up the ass. One like, of them had no. to have. I don't want it. <laughs> but uh, no, I, I like that fan, fan theory. I was like, I'd accept that. You know, Cap dies, Tony loses his arm, so he retires. Oh, that theory. <laughs> not the, <laughs> oh, we're not still the Ant Man up the ass. Yeah, that one's not bad. Uh, ultimately, everybody agrees that there's somehow they're going to undo the snap. Uh, yeah, they've got to, because if they don't, then several movies that they've announced can't happen. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, it's Patrick using a thigh master with his Patrick thumb. from SpongeBob. Steel. Patrick Star. Patrick yeah. Star, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I I think they're going to take out Tony. I think they're going to take out Cap, because both actors are pretty much done anyways. Um, well, and, Cap wanted out before. Yeah. Cap wanted out before. Tony's wanted out before. So, Tony, don't go. Uh, he's going to go. <laughs> Um, I think that's probably one of the best ways. And <laughs> Tony Stark explained to Ant Man how he is has to crawl up the thick purple space guy's ass to defeat him. Twenty nineteen cold size. And it's uh Woody and Buzz when <laughs> Buzz is staring off. All and day. Woody just has a face of just de- desperation. Oh. Just oh god. Have oh you heard god. the theories that Toy Story Four Bo Peep's gonna be the villain? I Bo mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, she is found with all the other crazy toys, so I don't know. Maybe I was like, "Oh, okay, that's gonna be a harsh, <laughs> harsh one." I, I like this meme. I've always I loved. love this meme. It's the Tom reaction meme. Yeah, I don't the like Tom this, with the straight the face, Thanos ass meme again. Well, you're gonna get Moving it. Moving on. Oh. So my last news okay. thing. Um, there's a new mod out for uh, New Vegas. Uh oh, I love New Vegas. They're calling it FPGE Functional Post Game Ending. So now this is going to allow you to use your other mods. Everything should still be fine. But the big thing is going to be the fact that when you make your decisions, you'll actually get an ending that makes sense to them rather than the generic ending that Obsidian did. I I will say some of the endings are a little bit... uh, Because having the NCR just say, oh, okay, I guess we're piecing out. I I guess because the the entire strip is going to be well powered and funded i guess we're just gonna no the N- the ncr uh, albeit full of some assholes didn't do much wrong so i've got a few breakdowns here for you for what they can do factions can be wiped out 
Others might conquer regions, and Hoover Dam can be taken over. After two, week, uh, after two weeks, Hoover Dam is taken over by the respective faction, and the fighting stops. Um, let's see. The kings will get eradicated by the Legion if, uh, if alive. The Brotherhood of Steel will uh, take over the uh, Helios One and the patrol, and will patrol the roads. And the Great Cons will evacuate their uh, camp, taking everything with them. This Holy is only a small shit. portion of what you can take. Uh, what can take place, however, and there are a massive amount of things that can uh, be changed. However, um, and they're saying mod. Go ahead and still mod because. You're doing story stuff, and that's the only... This mod does not actually take effect until you complete the game. So it can be loaded on your game, and it can sit there, and until... you can do whatever you want, but until the game is actually over, their this... mod doesn't take effect. Okay. So, I, I like, like that. it. And there, there's some really good mods out there. I want to do the Miami one that uh, they did for 3. Someone's trying to remake uh, Fallout 1 and Fallout 4. Wow. Yeah. That's that right. We talked about cool. that. So, I'm all for this. I didn't want to get too in it, because... Like I said, they get, they get detailed about all the potential things that could happen. I mean, there were a lot of different choices you can make in New Vegas. Uh, albeit some very, very dumb. Just by saying, oh yeah, they win, you lose. And they were like, oh, I guess we gotta go now. That it's like, perception what? roll. What? No. <laughs> they roll the perception. It, it's a natural one, but it still works. What? That perception roll. <laughs> you go blind. So, uh, <laughs> we're gonna move on to Piper's music news. So, uh, we don't, we've talked about before, we don't know a lot about uh, music, but Piper over here can't count the kind of stop <laughs> and it just it flows through him so he's got a few things it's all metal based right yeah pretty much for the most part okay. keep it true to what i'm about really sweet anything you want up here uh we'll start with a funny one just to see what you guys think of this okay hit me uh so go ahead and put a uh, trivium matt heffy or heffy it's a uh, h-e-a-f-y then double guitar strap oh so this is taken on the metal community quite a bit He's released this new guitar strap that is ergonomical. Instead of going over one shoulder, it goes over both. Now, he's released a couple pictures of it. There you go. That's okay. the one that uh, that's his ad picture for it. And he goes on the ad and explains how it's ergonomic and and he's right for I'm a guitarist myself and a lifetime of music holding that guitar on one shoulder could sure do some damage to you. I mean, but, I can see it considering one it's kind of like a backpack but in the front. So right. I mean, it seems like it would have its purpose. So for those of you who can't see it and if you don't want to google it, basically it has the normal strap, but then he has a secondary strap that comes over his right shoulder for a right-handed player and be the opposite for the left-handed. And then it straps around the whole base of your guitar between yeah, the strings and the pickups in yeah, that little section the middle, there. You can never do this with an acoustic. Yeah, it would go right over the hole <laughs> unless that strap is adjustable. And you don't necessarily. And for the hole, or you got to be. If you're up on stage, you're going to be mic'd for that. Yeah, yeah. Either that, or maybe it might be behind the. I'm the just saying, like, if you're if you're doing no. like an acoustic play at home or something, this strap would kind of throw off the sound a little bit. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, if you're at home, you shouldn't be playing standing up anyway with an acoustic. No. Who are you playing for? Sit down, relax, learn your stuff. <laughs> you but everybody's agreeing on one thing. They don't care at all about their shoulders or what their back's going to feel like when they're old. They just can't get over how fucking stupid it looks. It does look And everybody long, on yeah. everybody comments on are the same saying I would not I couldn't be caught dead on stage wearing that. One guy was saying maybe if you didn't play Les Pauls all the time and for you guys <sighs> Les Pauls is a rather heavy guitar. It is yes. pretty hefty. Uh, it's all metal in it. It's pretty, yeah, no, it's made so of a lot of wood and everything. I've actually been to a Trivium show. Oh, Trivium's amazing. I it's, love them. I love them. It was now, a great the other thing show. is right there. It's his, that's his custom. He has a custom. It's called the Snowfall. It is 100% white, all the hardware. It's a gorgeous guitar. It does look great. Now, my favorite comment on this whole story was this guy who says, maybe if your custom guitar wasn't 800 fucking pounds. And that's the truth. I also play a heavy guitar. I have a BC Rich Mockingbird STC, and that thing does cramp down on your arm. So, so gonna... now I've solved my issue. I don't need an ergonomic strap. I bought a lighter fucking guitar. <laughs> so what you're telling me is he's actually flexing while holding these two in this photo. Oh yeah, those are heavy, and those and the one they on the right, look, it's a seven string, so this that thing's even heavier. Wrong, but they look thick. Oh mm, yeah, damn. But the Les Paul is a very thick body; it's at least like inch and a half, two inches. Especially remembering that this is electric. Yep, like yeah. that is a thick fucking electric guitar. That's a big yep. baby, big booty. 
Yeah, so that one's just kind of for fun. A lot of people are talking about that. Yikes. Uh, right. Otherwise, we all know Ozzy Osbourne, correct? Mm-hmm. Yes, we do. Do you know he suffered another injury? Yes, he did. I, I did not. Oh, wait, how, how uh, early are we talking here? So this was just announced, I think, yesterday. Oh, no. Uh, he had to postpone his 2019 tour dates. Uh, basically, he I got pneumonia. Uh, do you? Yeah. yeah. yeah they, 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 we had tickets from 2018 that, because he hurt his fingers, got postponed to 2019. Yeah, I think oh, they have the new dates no. for the. Uh, I want to say it's uh, July. Okay, let's see. Yeah, they have the dates here. Uh, but yeah, essentially, he got pneumonia and he got pretty sick. But yeah. while at home, he all they said is he agitated a previous or existing condition or injury that he sustained from an ATV accident back in 03. Yeah, I remember so the back when the TV show was running. Yeah, yeah, yeah he was fucked up for that. You remember that? Yeah. yeah. So I guess while he was sick with pneumonia, he agitated that. Injury, so that's what kind of made him have to push everything back. He did release a statement though, and I quote: "He goes, I can't believe I have to reschedule more tour dates. Words cannot express how frustrated, angry, and depressed I am not to be able to tour right now. I'm I'm grateful for the love and support I'm getting from my family, my band, friends, and fans. It's really what's keeping me going. Just know that I am getting better every day. I will fully recover. I will finish my tour, and I will be back. And He's keeping word. He has all the tour dates posted. So if you do have tickets to his shows in 2019, go ahead and look up his new postponed dates. Okay. So 731 for me. Yep. Yeah. So if you're MGM. in Vegas, uh, the new date is July 31st. That's a Friday at the MGM Grand Garden Arena. And, so okay. the venue has not changed. The, that, that's a good thing because the venue is actually one of the reasons we picked the show. Yep. Because I don't. I'm 26, but I can't handle the crowds. I can't handle the standing. I like to be able to sit down. Yeah. And that's why I picked the Grand. The, or uh, Warren picked the Grand. To those who are living in L.A., there is one that says to be announced in July. So keep keep yourself up to date with it because yeah. it doesn't seem to be. We're looking at these on Loudwire. So, um, I mean, it could be. Uh, oh, no, I'm not saying anything. Is, I'm just letting them know where well, we're looking. Yeah, this is also. Uh, this was just updated today. Yeah, this was just updated. So. Sorry to hear uh, Ozzy Osbourne's hurt again. Yeah, I'm just yeah. hoping that he gets better, speedy recovery, and manages to handle all these tours. Because he, also, he's having to do a Euro tour, yeah? Uh, he canceled the Euro tour last oh, year. No. Well, he's doing another No More Tears tour. No More Tears 2. That yeah. starts, I believe, in February 2020. Oh, boy. Did you hear that Stones had to cancel theirs? Oh, man. No, but I did see that they have another one. Si- or no, that's not. That's wrong. No, incorrect. They, Jagger, I think Guns N' Roses they just announced they're going to do a one yeah, show. Jagger got sick. Um, he's not saying what the issue is, um, but him and his doctors are saying he's at home relaxing, and they're going to reschedule for later dates. Looks like it says here he's resting after successful heart surgery. Where? On wow. the right there? Yeah, this one. Okay, one? that one was just posted an hour ago. Yeah, that one's Let's brand new. Out. Okay. Well, good to know that he's... Wow, we are finding out all this breaking so the, news. The other thing is to remember that Jagger's 75 years old. You're right. Ozzy is roughly around the same age. And we can't all be Alice Cooper, who is like ancient <laughs> and still acts like he's 10. He's a fucking vampire. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what he is. <laughs> well, and I actually, there's a, an interview that uh, D. Snyder did where he talks about... Uh, he goes, I don't want to be like Alice, who says he wants to be out there at 85 doing it. <laughs> I want to. I want to cap out at a certain. You want to retire? That, that's fun and fair. But Alice lives for the show, though. Like I think if Alice retires, I think that would be what would hurt him more. Oh man! Wow. So essentially, the quick uh, skim of this article on Mick Jagger basically says seventy-five year old had a heart valve procedure and stent inserted. Okay. In a sagging alter- uh, artery. Excuse me. So yeah, he just had some weak vessels he had to get yeah. strengthened up. And I will quote this right now: "No rescheduling for the missed dates have been announced. So yeah. hopefully, sometime soon there will get be your refund. either refunding or maybe they might be able to push back the dates like us. Maybe Ozzy's yeah. uh. So Craig Ferguson has a thing where he talks about that he hung out with uh, Rolling Stones okay. for a while, and that he asked Mick if he was like on tour with them, and he goes, "Do you think tonight I could come up on stage with you guys?" And he goes, "Keith wouldn't like that." <laughs> and he's like, Keith wouldn't like that. What? He's like, Keith wouldn't like that. Don't do it. They're like, we, I can't tell you. Yeah, Keith wouldn't like that. He's like, Keith's not like the boss of the band. He's like, no, there's no boss of the band, but Keith wouldn't, wouldn't like, that. Wouldn't like you, that. You can't do that. He wouldn't like that. <laughs> and he's standing there in the wings and they're playing and he just says, fuck it. And he goes bouncing out there and he's jamming out. And Keith turns and locks eyes with him, keeps playing, comes all the way across the, uh, the stage to him, just goes, hi, how are you doing? Hey. And he's like staring into his soul and Ferguson's just like, good. <laughs> and he's like i've never been so scared before <laughs> like he he could have killed him and gotten away with it yeah well he's 
fucking Keith. Yeah. <laughs> like, so what else you got? <laughs> uh, here's a funny one from overseas. So here's, the, I'm just going to read the headline. You can take with what you will. Death metal drummer in New Zealand charged with multiple church fires. Multiple. Multiple church okay, fires. Um, to already said another preface, uh, the New Zealand's already been plagued with the mass shooting earlier yep. this, well, yeah, earlier this month. Well, uh, well m- March. Uh, March. Now, the correlation here, so what I'm people just... are saying is it's just months after a movie was made about the Norwegian death metal scene, which also chronicalizes all the church burnings that happened in the early 90s. So, so they're thinking it's... Now, This he's a drummer. He's 28 years old. Uh, he played in a couple bands. Uh, Igni, might say that wrong, Oblivion Dawn, and Secularity. I've never heard of any of him, but I'm not a big Wait, New, he's, New Zealand metal fan. He's 28. Or Norwegian. Yeah, he's 28. No, Norwegian or New Zealand? Well, it he's says Norwegian. it's months after a Norwegian death metal uh, scene documentary came out, but okay. he is a New Zealand he's drummer. New Zealand. Gotcha. Okay, but he's 28, and these docu- the documentary lists these fires in the 90s, though that he would have been a kid, right? Uh, which so I'm thinking, what I'm thinking is he's, he's, he caught the documentary and he's like just, you know, just repeating it, just like yeah, yeah, gotcha. well, that looked kind of interesting. Interesting. Uh, if you're over there, or if you do, or if you're curious, the it was two churches. Uh, it looks like both were damaged so much that they needed de- uh, demolishing. Uh, they had to get taken down, demolishing. Excuse where, me. Where are your chin at, bro? <laughs> yeah, he has no chin, doesn't he? Uh, the first one was in uh, Christchurch, and the second one was uh, just said the West Coast. So I'm not sure where those are in New Zealand, but so I'm going to hopefully say that. Oh, also wrote Satan lives on the door. Okay. Oh yeah, he went out there. He mm. went. He went. So I'm going to go on a limb and say this is not connected to the person up there okay so now when when metal bands of any sort death metal hair metal this kid, this kid doesn't metal, even look death metal with his fucking receding hairline <laughs> they they all do crazy things ozzy snorted ants yada 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 Bad you, blood, you don't yeah, yeah. light a church on fire yeah i don't think the i think the worst ozzy ever did was crash a car into a building but no one was inside the building but it wasn't how like, half a black sabbath died because they pulled over and took a plane and started flying around with it and crashed it into the tour bus oh yeah, never mind. You're right. That would be a little bit worse. That wasn't Ozzy, though. He was there, but he... it, him and Sharon were both there. But, dude, yeah. fucking lighting churches on fire, man. Yeah. And, <laughs> like, and, damn. And saying, Hail Satan. Yep. Yeah. He was charged with, uh, what I got here? Charged Your, with. Born Necro Butcher. Real talk? Good, good, good Necro nickname. Butcher, that's yeah. not bad. That's a pretty good nickname. But, wait, so do you cut, or do you just kill the dead, or do you slice them up, uh, like, Necro Butcher mm. would be the already dead. Yeah, well, yeah, the, yeah. like the, yeah, Necro Bring would be the dead, dead. been brought, brought back. Uh, the Butcher part is what I'm confused about. Is, like, is he slaughtering the dead or is he serving them up as cold cuts? I would say Ooh. cold cuts. <laughs> okay, I would so he's uh, uh, Sweeney Todd. Gotcha. Yeah, kind of. Well, no, Sweeney well, Todd, Sweeney Todd killed, killed living. I think he's like this is grave Necro, robbing. So yeah, he's he's grave dead. robbing and then or chopping reanimating up, reanimating them and killing them and chopping them up. Yeah, or he made or he wanted to remake that display case from um thirteen or not thirteen ghosts oh, house honey. on haunted hill. So wait, if oh, you there you go. so wait, <laughs> if you kill someone and then chop them up, it's not necro butching. I don't know. Well, yeah, See? yeah. That's what it kind of was. It was well, no, slice the throat, just... they drop, and then they get cooked. No, that's just getting rid of the evidence. Yeah. Okay. Cannibalism. Why are we talking? <laughs> Moving anyway, on. So he was charged with <laughs> two accounts of uh, arson and one account of unlawful taking of a vehicle. Okay. So now, do you have a metal name? Do I have a metal name? Yeah, I had one at one point. Okay. Oh, what, what was, was it? Name? It was the Lumberjack Zack. Probably Real talk? The, I like that. Because the like beard. That. And at the time, I was a drummer, and it came from Which my probably... guitarist because at the end of practice, at the end of the show, behind my drum kit would look like a sawmill. There was just shavings and broken sticks everywhere. And from the beard, and I had a flannel that I would wear that was sleeveless, I guess got pinned the Lumberjack Zack. Interest, very interesting. Yeah, it worked. Uh, now, we should point out, we call him Piper. His name's Zack. True. <laughs> <laughs> he's Zack Piper, but he's Piper to us, so... Um, no, that's not, I like that one. That's not bad. Yeah, but that one died. I'm not a guitar. I'm not a drummer anymore. I'm a drum uh, guitarist now. <laughs> so not more breaking sticks. Now, if you break a guitar, if it's a wooden guitar, well, they're all. Well, would you still be lumberjack? I guess at that point, yes. <laughs> no, you get one that looks like an axe. Oh, there you go. You go around chopping other guitars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you walk up and slice the guitarist's drumsticks in half. There, there you <laughs> go. Be pissed, but. Yeah. It'll work. It'll work. All right. What else you got? Sorry. Uh, the rest is just kind of what's coming up, uh, oh. what's releasing and stuff like that. Uh, cool. One that already released, but I have to talk about if you haven't heard it yet. If you're a death metal or deathcore fan, 
Go listen to Whitechapel, The Valley, based on true events. Just came out, I believe, the 29th or the 28th of March. That, oh, if you like Whitechapel and how you, and for, for Phil Bozeman, Phil Bozeman, excuse me, he's always been known of writing songs that are about his past and stuff like that. He's gone through a real traumatic childhood and everything. Uh, but this time, he takes us to a whole new level. If you're not a fan of harsh vocals, he does have lyric videos and stuff, but he's one of those guys... You can understand it a little bit. He does get real low, like oh, oh, oh. I mean, he gets down <laughs> there. Yeah, but and that's uh, my one problem with uh, things like that. Whether it's any kind of metal or screamo or anything like that, is when I can't understand you anymore, I stop enjoying the song. Yeah. <laughs> like, and, it, and in some genres, it's actually a staple to be more not understood. Yeah, it's actually better to be more monstrous than it is to be heard. Yeah, and, but that's a different genre thing. But Phil has this great just presence with his voice and he has i mean he hits these lows but you can still understand the words okay. okay and also for those who are curious he does sing in this album too which is a new well they kind of dabbled into a little bit but this album there's actually a track where it's pretty much all clean vocal but it's like it's a they brought something back from like the 90s that hasn't been done really lately it's like a doom metal slowed down augmented like diminished chords it's real kind of eerie and it's it's a very good song. I think it's actually he's quoted saying it's his favorite song. The new album's called Third Depth. So go check out that album. Cool. All right. I mean, I I might from that. Uh, it's definitely good. And I mean, I'm a heavy guy. I like filthy, slow, groovy riffs, and they've always delivered on that. But they also, I mean, they can do that fast blast beats and circle pits and all that craziness. They got everything in between. They're okay. just a powerhouse group, and Phil Bozeman is known as like one of the voices of metal. Like he is a staple. He's one of those guys where you hear him, you know that's him. Okay, he's on the council. Cool. Oh yeah, definitely. Okay. Uh, besides that, either you listen to Tool. Yeah. Uh, years new, ago, but yeah. New album. Yeah, I was about to be. I was about to be like, I haven't heard of him in a long. time. Thirteen wow. years. It's yeah. been thirteen years. Well, it makes sense because it sounds like high school. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, so I, I was. God, I was just coming out of middle school. Yep. 10,000 Days came out in 2006. This is the first we're hearing about them coming back. Now, it's been kind of... People have guessed it's coming just because this past year they've been increasing their live performances. But uh, it's finally been announced that it is going to be coming in uh, 2019. They're guessing maybe June, maybe maybe May. could be May or June. Oh, Jesus Christ. But uh, yeah, Tool's coming back, baby. Oh, Jesus. So, is it everyone? Uh, I'm not too sure if it's the original lineup. I didn't read too far into it. I kind of just scribbled some notes real quick before I left. All right. I was just real excited to see it, so I'm going to look more into it and keep an eye out uh, for sure. So they've got a rejecting busy drummer statement that we be ready by April. Uh, yeah, they got a. Sm- it's very small and it's day, 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 day. Yep. Pretty much. Well, a skip of a day here, but. Uh, besides them, uh, Killswitch Engage is in the studio recording. Uh, they actually recorded about 22 songs. No, I like Killswitch. No, I like Killswitch. Uh, unfortunately, it's it's still the original singer. I was a fan of the second singer. <laughs> <laughs> but you know. Neutral. Yeah. I forget their names right now. I don't want to get them wrong. But um, so they recorded about 22 songs without vocals, and they all gave them to Jesse, who's their current singer now. And uh, or he was the original, but you know that kind of thing. Yeah, they they had their original. He left. They brought another guy, and now they're back to the original. Yeah, I can't remember the Howard. That's Howard. his name, Howard Jones. Yep. Howard was O uh, two to eleven, and Jesse was since two thousand twelve. Well, Jesse was also the original. So yeah. So oh, okay. So before he was from creation till two thousand two, and then back in two thousand twelve. Yep. Okay. But I they, think uh, I probably listened when Howard was a thing, based off the dates. Yeah, Howard yeah. was the man. Now, they have uh, recorded that many songs. They gave it to Jesse, and he was kind of overwhelmed with the amount of them. So he did actually manage to write vocals and record vocals for 17 of the songs. So as you've already guessed, you're not going to get an album with 17 songs on it. Mm -hmm. So they said there's a lot that's not going to make it, but they are going to hold it and reuse it and try to release it somehow, some way. Either that be... Probably just a small EP. Yeah, it could be something. Or do two albums. I mean, if you cut the 17 down and you said you had 23 total, I mean, you could probably fit two albums. Well, they they have 22 instrumentals, 17 with with vocals. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, if you release... Side A, side B. Half of the 17 or so. Yeah, it's possible they'll do, like, a... 12 or 13 yeah. and then have three bonus tracks for a collector edition or okay yeah that could work yeah. i would say the other thing they could do is what they don't use have him go and record for those last of those instrumental and then slap together an album but yeah i mean new music huh i mean like, like you said they, they had the other singer so yeah. i mean there's we'll a couple it... there's uh, the new album they had is a lot i mean 
I use um, what is it? My curse is a good example between Jesse and Howard of who mm-hmm. I like more, and Howard's far none the better at that song for me. Now, for Jesse and that new album, they have they wrote with him, so it kind of it, it fit better. Now, I don't remember if My Curse was written with Jesse or Howard, but Howard definitely sang it better, in my opinion. Now, uh, I think it's uh, Days Go or Days Something that's on the newest album that definitely does fit Jesse's vocals. So if they write around it and they keep it in his proper key, I think it's going to be a good album. Okay. Mm. So, uh, I mean, we'll have to wait in here. Yeah. Uh, that's basically what it comes down to. Uh, great show in Canada. This is fucking lineup right here. Headlining a new Canadian festival is on July 26th and the 27th is Slayer, Rob Zombie, Marilyn Manson, and Disturbed. Holy now, shit! That's now, of course, the opening acts are just as good. I mean, uh, Animals as Leaders in there. I mean, there's a bunch of good opening acts. But, I mean, those are your four <coughs> headliners. Uh, you got two on the first night, two on the second night. But that's a hell of a fucking lineup for Canada. You you slapped down enough for both both sets of tickets i'm wondering how much they are uh, in fact uh, what, what tickets go uh, tickets go on sale this friday so tomorrow uh, april 5th uh, what's this called again uh the headline itself just said a new canadian festival so now since you mentioned zombie you might as well mention uh we're still waiting and i'm super excited we're getting uh three from hell yep. uh, next in the uh franchise for um i'm spacing on the first movie's name uh house of thousand corpses Okay, so Chaos AD, is that what it's called? It's uh, like yeah, K- it's got the names. Chaos AB. Or AB, sorry. Yeah, Chaos AB. But yeah, oh. so that, that's a hell of a show for you I guys like out there. Uh, besides that, we got... Uh, I did just here on the way here, so I made a quick note. Three Days Grace and Breaking Benjamin are going on tour. Breaking Benjamin? Oh, that, yeah! That's a, good li- that's a good group pairing Which right one there. changed you, the singer? Like, uh-huh. One of them changed the singer. It ain't breaking. I can tell you that one. Yeah, it's breaking. not breaking. I think Three Days Three had days. a member change, but I don't remember if it was the singer. I think it was the singer, and I didn't like the new guy. Um, but no, you, you want, like, I, I won't cry to any musical number, maybe to Xanarkin from Final Fantasy X, but Breaking Benjamin will get me. James, when he came back from the army, bought the entire discography for Breaking Benjamin. <laughs> like, <laughs> like the whole thing, digital. It's very good. <laughs> I was like, damn, dude. Uh, and other tour announcements, I guess the last one would be my group is going on tour. Uh, we're doing an East Coast leg, uh, June 20th to the 29th is about the time we'll be there going from Baltimore to DC, Pennsylvania, Virginia. We'll be all over the place, so... Take photos for me. Yeah, oh, yeah we'll take some photos. We're going to be out there. It's going to be a good time. See some cool shit. Don't fuck up too many things. Yep. So if you're out in the East Coast, you want to hear some uh, good metal, come check us out. All right, well, we were trying to get the prices for you on the Chaos AB. To, uh, this, this well, the tickets like go on sale tomorrow. So. Tickets yeah. on sale, but it also seems like the website isn't up Yeah, right he's now. clicking on the link for the grab tickets here this Friday. It's not working. Yeah, so I'm just going to ignore it for now. But Check I'm, it out I'm, tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that they are very inexpensive, and it's going to be in Canada. So, I, I mean, passports. <laughs> yeah. And it's in Alberta. Hey, at least it's not England. Uh, we're going to need visas for those now. To oh, start yeah. going to Europe, we need a visa yeah. now. You're right. All right, so uh, our discussion for today. Um, now, we had talked about two different things. I think I'm going to move over to the other one, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this one. Okay. So our discussion is I want to talk about uh, all-time favorites or what you think are the best film scores. Something that stands out for to you. Something that gives you goosebumps when you hear it. Something that the instant you hear it, you're taken to that movie. Now, I, I've got several. Most of mine are in kind of the, the adventure theme. Uh, yeah, that's um so who wants to you want to go first you want to go first hmm if i had to throw a movie together just by the by the music itself i would probably say snatch it was very subtle it wasn't too outgoing it was very very on the See, i'm having troubles thinking of the film score for snatch because i'm remembering the music in snatch like the actual soundtrack not the film score yeah so i'm having troubles thinking of it on that one now my you know big what? problem is I try to I I'm trying to think of something YouTube. other than John Williams because I, I, John Williams comes to John mind Williams. for so many amazing film scores. Uh, who who did who did Jaws? John Williams. John Williams. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if it was Spielberg and it was good, it was most likely John Williams. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, wow. Now here's an interesting thing. Me and you were talking about Reanimator earlier today. Yeah. The guy that did the film score for Reanimator, and when you're sitting there watching the movie, you're, you're going to hear it. He ripped off Psycho. You think it's, really, oh. it is psycho, mm. and but it's different enough that you kind of go, did you rip them off? Were you paying homage? Mm. Because it's not terrible, and it, but it's not original. Yeah, 
So yeah, again, if you want to talk about uh, John Williams, you got Star Wars up there. Um, there's also simple things like Mission Impossible where they just had that Mission really Impossible good theme song uh, James came... Bond technically. Yeah, Bond's got the the theme song that came or over. Matrix well. always had some good stuff. Matrix, oh, God. it was that electronic yeah. kind of, but not like. Hands down, best goes to Tenacious D, though. Pick a destiny. <laughs> all day. All day. You know what? You, you're right. Um, I, I fucked up. I was about to say this one, but you're right. <laughs> Tenacious D would have the best score, considering it's just... Well, it's, you know, person to person. Yeah. yeah. See, what, what I'm also trying to think of is, I want to say Danny Elfman's Batman, purely because it was such a strong sound that has become the sound for Batman, to the point that when they made the animated series, the person they hired for the music said... Do Elfman. Well, when you uh, say score, it may, it leads me into the more uh, orchestra. Yeah, that's why I'm like, yeah, yeah. like, it's more. I'm making a joke with the tenacious D. But, yeah, yeah. But then at the same time, it's like, are you? There really was a lot of well, no, they had a lot of music yeah, in the background and, and stuff like that that weren't connected to the song. Yeah, and they weren't okay. part of like their little yeah. play on. Um, um, but the Elfman stuff even transitioned into the video games and stuff like that. Like Elfman's music became the sound for Batman, which is crazy because if you think about the Sam Raimi Spider Man ones, you hear that Spider Man music. You think of Spider Man, and subsequent things have influenced that, or uh, have like referenced that. Again, that's Elfman. Okay. Well, then I'd like um, Wolfman. Which one? Uh, a whole the... bunch of them. Like all their, they all kind of have that same eerie. Okay. Kind of. I like, saying, uh, yeah. like cute, like uh, Jack Nicholson when he did it. And all oh, that, like... um, Wolf. Yeah. I think it was just called Wolf. Yeah. I'm trying to remember the one that's in my head. It's a more modern one. I want to say it's it's not it might not be Wolfman, but it's uh. Bernard Hopkins is in it. He's basically like the grandfather werewolf, basically. And then his son comes back home, and it's like in some uh, eerie town off, of, you know, by London or something. Wait, like are that. you you're thinking? Are you thinking Anthony Hopkins, not Bernard Hopkins? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah Hopkins. Bernard oh, Hopkins is a boxer, <laughs> uh, <laughs> executioner. It's the um, ben- uh, no, it's not Ben. Is it ben- Benicio? Benicio del Toro. Yeah, what the Wolfman movie they made a couple years back with Anthony Hopkins as the father. Um, it was an actual remake of Wolfman. It's probably where they should have started. Yeah, I think it's called The Wolfman. Yeah, it's just Wolfman or The Wolfman. Yeah, it was The good. Wolfman, yeah. The, oh, the music in that one was was great. Yeah. Um, I, and it's like you were saying with Spider-Man. They have this kind of note they hit and a kind of cadence and everything that kind of goes into, yep, uh, it's a werewolf movie. Yeah. Yeah, they even you even get that a little bit with some of the early Dracula movies, yeah. where they all kind of went for the same feel and they built the thing. Sadly, that one doesn't transition into Dracula movies now because vampires just fall into a weird place where all the movies have to be so odd, so different. Um, I would what, say the last good one would probably be Interview with a Vampire, but I can't remember its score slash music too well. I don't think it. I don't think I can remember that one either. Like I remember the movie very clearly. Yeah, but the problem is, is then you get the sequel. Um, Queen of the Damned, where everything is corn. <laughs> yeah. I'm okay with that. Well, I'm, he's I'm in it. All right with uh, that. He's walking down the street in one of the scenes. Uh, the singer from Corn. Uh, but I brought up Akira, and I was like, oh, fuck, how could I have forgotten the freaking uh, the, the taiko drums? Just do, 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 do. And as it's playing through, as he's on his motorcycle, dragging the, the pipe behind him, I'm like, I can remember the scene that it plays it in. I'm like, okay, yeah, I, I, I just can't remember all of it. It's just the music made me remember that scene yeah well, like, I, i've got my definite go-to's with uh jurassic park jaws uh back to the future back to the future is one that'll get me every single time um and then you got the bond so- uh the bond the bond sound damn it which the um impossible sound, yeah. the mission impossible sound but the bond one uh originally they were going to do under uh, they were going to do three by mice or under the mango tree as the opening song and someone i think it was sean connery but i could be wrong Walked up to them and went, that's what you're going to start this movie out as? And they're like, yeah, it's the beginning of the movie and everything. He's like, your movie's going to be synonymous with that song. This whole franchise is going to be synonymous with that song. You need to do something else. And so the uh, Dr. No theme uh, is, uh, like, their theme song, like, each movie gets one. Theirs is actually the Bond music. That you hear in every movie from then on, Dr. No's is the that song. Bond song. Neat. Um, and then th- from there, they started doing the thing where people make songs for the movies. Um, Rocky is another one, yeah. yeah. Where Rocky is a, a good surpri- movie in of itself. I'm surprised I haven't seen Wizard of Oz on there yet. I mean, well, we're only at... Uh, we're only at 22. Yeah, we've we're got looking a at a list, list of, of top 50. Yeah. 
According to somebody. According to somebody. Uh, and, yeah. I mean, th- their list Someone doesn't seem bad. It's just, was holy paid. shit, this person's been through. They pull some. I mean, they're in head. the 60s, 70s. Yeah, they pulled a lot. So I'm not going to take away from this person. This person seems well, very. 1949. Yeah, this person seems very well. Ver- Taxi driver. Yeah, okay. Lawrence Scorsese. Uh, speaking of uh, directors, I just bought the uh, Francis Coppola's wine the other day for $5. Really? Yeah. So I'm going to give that a shot. So when Nicholas Cage's granddaddy? Uh no, uh uncle. Oh uncle. <laughs> okay. But I'm gonna give it a shot. Like I'm super intrigued. Um, okay, see I've the that, now they've network? got the social network. As number eleven. I've I mean, seen the social network plenty of times. I actually enjoyed the movie. I cannot remember that that sound at all. I mean, maybe it was a little pullback because I, I I remember seeing it the first time it had like a uh uh cyberistic Wait, one. Trent Reznor. Trent Reznor? Yeah. So wait, the Trent Reznor and how how do you say that name? Atticus, Atticus Ross. Atticus Ross. Atticus. Okay. Uh, I am first Spartacus. Full length film score is a masterpiece of gloomy, menacing atmosphere. I did not realize that was Reznor. I know Reznor does a lot of film scores for um, Fincher, but I didn't know he did Social Network. That's weird. Why I do I feel like I know remember. him? He's a uh, Nine Inch Nail. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Nine Inch Nails, right? Which one? Reznor? Trent, Trent Reznor. I think so. Yeah. Um, I know he does a lot of... Uh, he does uh, do a lot of uh, Fincher's movies. He does a lot of film scores for Fincher. Um, but I just never knew he did Social Network. That's weird to me. All right. Here we go. Oh, okay. Halloween. Halloween's so a good one. all the music in this movie also is Carpenter. He had a band at the time. Really? Yeah, and they did the music for the movie. Like, it was all their songs. And then you've got the Halloween theme. The doom, 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 mm-hmm. doom, 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 doom. Okay. Neat. Oh my gosh. Shaft. <laughs> and to think this is getting an update to uh, a yeah, much have more. Have you seen that? The, the trailer for the new Shaft? No. I'm it not. looks good. It has three generations of Shaft. Oh shit. It's yeah. got it's got the OG, it's got uh uh Jackson. Samuel Jackson and oh don't tell me I'm gonna wanna search it. I don't know his name. <sighs> but they've got someone playing Shaft Jr. Yeah. Like, so technically Shaft the third. Um, I'm gonna look yeah, it was a moment where I watched him watch the trailer and he's like, really? Cause they showed the young kid and they knocked on the door and Samuel shows up and he's like, oh. okay. And okay. then grandpa shows up and it's the original yes! chef actor and he just loses it. Uh, um, God what's the it. kid's name? I don't know. <laughs> I have to go to IMDB and look it up. Uh, Avon. I, I don't think that's it. Gogla. That doesn't Go-la. look like it. That does not look like no. him. Okay. No. What the fuck? Oh, what Chef. Is there he is. Jesse oh. T. Usher. Jesse T. Usher. Yes, yeah, that's him. Okay. Uh, he's a very, very handsome looking gentleman in the the red suit. And those red suits, I made comment that those at least have to be $6,000 suits. Probably. Like, Jesus Christ. Um, but yeah, holy shit. So let's see what number one is on this uh, film score list. Okay, hold on. Uh, eight is Psycho. Psycho. I will Fair. give you Psycho. I haven't seen ones that pop in my head so far. If I had to think about music I really liked, uh, Black Swan. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. A little, a little bit pulled back. I, I forgot about this one. He, he saw a new one on the it. screen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. He's uh, not losing it over Black Swan. No, he's no. losing it over a Clockwork Orange. Yes, uh, I liked the movie a lot. I loved the book. I loved the the movie. The score. I I'm trying to recall some of the 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 tones. It's coming, but it's it's been a while since I've seen the movie. Also, but then again, it's been a while since I've seen Akira. But I can remember that one clear as day. So you're saying Black Swan? I, I vaguely remember that one. Uh, it just what had a lot of ones? good music. Uh, some other ones I would say. I don't think Sherlock Holmes. Movie. All those mo- the Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, ones. The all Downey those Jr. movies had, had, had really great music. Uh, Whiplash was uh, incredible. Yeah. If you really, if you're into jazz and like jazz contemporary music. So the good, the bad, and the ugly. This is that. Wah, 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 wah. Yeah, it's yeah. iconic. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I'm surprised you have, I haven't seen Wizard of Oz. You think of it. You think of the, every you, western. You think of the witch every and dun, 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 yeah. dun, dun, Blade, Blade Runner. Runner. <laughs> That's number one. <laughs> I mean, I didn't Runner, see Wizard of Oz. The anyway. eighty-two Blade Runner is number one, and I mean, it did have good music because it fit the feel of the movie. Nor did yeah. I see a Christmas story. No, a Christmas story was not on there. All right, let's see what other. I mean, there is some good piano in that. Um, when he on when he opens that red rider, that beautiful piano. That that that. that, that. Uh, (laughs) I know. So, um, I think probably next time we could talk about songs from movies, or we could talk about uh, soundtracks too, because. 
this had an ad on oh. the side for Guardians, which just makes me think of amazing soundtracks. Oh movies. yeah, no. If you do soundtracks, it's a whole that tenacious yeah, deep. That, I mean, well, that, that's, that's, that's when you get into those the, arguments. Yeah, there was there was talks of film scores, there was talks of soundtracks, and there was also talks of songs made for movies that right. then would become a hit later on. Ah, I got you. So you've got the Bond songs. You've got. Um, I'm, tr- I'm trying to think of a few more that were made. Mission Impossible. Movies. Well, Mission Impossible is the. Uh, I feel like that falls back under the film score. Um, but like, because like we were talking about, Chris Cornell did the uh, Casino Royale song. Right. And because it's not named Casino Royale, anyone that's not a Bond fan doesn't realize it. Okay, so you could say the same thing like Lincoln Park's New Divide and stuff like that. It was made yeah, for, for Transformers, Transformers, even they though did, they could use it in their album too. Yeah, they did it. For which that's three cheating. Three Transform movie, Transformer movies. I believe yeah, three or four. I think they only did the first three. Oh, oh, as far as the music. Oh, yeah, yeah. the music. Yeah, they got Park the songs. The, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The song. uh, I, yeah, I think Ch- so. Uh, yeah, and um, I don't fucking know what that. I have no clue why they brought out such good music for a bad movie. I mean, the it third one, too they, bad. The first two were good. The third one. Oh, they wipe went the down. sweat off the brow and tell me that it wasn't great. Speaking of music for those movies, um, the third one, the scene where they're going to shoot them in, in the space, uh, Shadow the Buff and. What's his name? The director for those movies. Likes the bullshit. Michael Bay. Michael Bay, thank you. Uh, got into an argument because they had uh, iHome on set to play music to get him in the mood. And Michael Bay said, I'm going to play this song to get you in the mood. And he goes, no, I want this song. This is how I feel I would be in the scene. And it's like, he's directing you. He's the director. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, he's literally doing his job right now and you're arguing with him, man. Just listen to the music Michael Bay wants you to listen to. Turn the fuck on. Dude. You will listen to my music. But we're going to end it there. Um, so... I want to do one more plug for your band? Where, they, where can they find you guys at? All right. Uh, band's called Hidden Scars. You can find us on Spotify, Facebook, uh, YouTube, Deezer. I mean, Apple Music, everything you can use, basically. Uh, we have our own website, hiddenscars.com, you can go to. You can catch us at our upcoming shows. We've got one April 13th, Triple B's, or Backstage Barn Billiards at Las Vegas, Nevada. May 3rd at uh, Count Vamps with 69 Eyes. Then we got Is that the May- place up on Sahara? Uh, Count Vamps, yes. Oh, okay. yeah. uh, and then we have the House of Blues on May 18th, the Chris Cornell Tribute Show. Uh, and then we're going to L.A. on June 13th to play with Flotsam and Jetson. Uh, we're going to play a couple other shows out there in Cali on the 14th, 15th, and possibly the 16th. Then we're going to the East Coast, uh, D.C. on the 20th, uh, Delaware on the 21st, Baltimore on the 22nd, Philadelphia on the 23rd, and we're going to add more to that one as well. Uh, so go ahead, give a uh, check out to us and see if you like and come out to one of those shows. Now, you mentioned uh, Facebook. Do you guys on any other social network platforms? Twitter? Oh, yeah. Twitter, like Instagram, there everything there is. Cool, cool, That's cool. exactly we'll what I was trying to... <laughs> I was like, I'm I was a like, Facebook Ooh. guy myself, so I never use... I have I'd Instagram the and stuff. I Twitter for the podcast, so I'm going to let you guys up on there. Perfect. And then... Like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm new to Twitter also, and I'm like, God damn it, it looks like I got to start going down. And then all of a sudden, I start using Twitter, and I'm like, Critical role spoilers. Ah, oh, shit. He's slowly falling in love with Twitter. Though. I'm falling in love, and also I've fallen hate. Yeah. And it's it's depressing when Liam is the one who's giving the spoilers. Oh, I'm yeah. like, God damn <laughs> you, Liam. I love you, but you're a bastard. So uh, that's it for tonight, though, guys. Uh, we'll have Piper back on another episode, and he's also working on our uh, intro music. Yep, yeah, that'll be coming out soon. Yes. Um, once you're not so busy with the band, we'll see if we can get you back in. <laughs> Sounds good to me. All right, thanks, guys. Back credit card. Later.